and welcome to our brand new venue here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. I'm joined by our esteemed commentary team just to discuss how things are going so far. Henry, you've probably been here more than anyone. I don't think I've actually seen you leave the building yet. Just tell us how impressed you are with what you've seen so far. First off, I do go home. Every now and then I do go home, but this is just another level, isn't it? I mean, obviously we had the venue in Southampton, which was really good for the player that gave him the opportunity to play through COVID times and given opportunities, but this is the next level. This is the next level for players outside the PDC to adapt to stage game, to play regularly, to get themselves practiced and, and get themselves in, in tip-top condition. Some of them to get tour cards, some of them obviously later on in their careers, now they've dropped off the Pro Tour. This is the perfect place for someone to, to play at a really high level outside the PDC system. And credit to Modus for this setup because this is amazing. Most definitely. And Murph, Henry's touched upon it there, but George Noble also said before we got going that this is kind of like the championship. The PDC is the Premier League. And that is the perfect way of looking at it, isn't it? Because players are using this in conjunction with the Challenge Tour, the Development mm -hmm. Tour, to elevate their careers. Yeah, in terms of coverage, it is because why should it just be the elite players that get TV coverage? It gives the opportunity to players that may have fallen off the tour or players who harbour ambitions of getting onto the tour for the first time, not only to play on a stage, not only to play competitive matches against other very good players, but also to get a little bit of practice in doing things like media commitments and interviews and all those kind of things. So it's, I think it works well as a stepping stone to play on the, on the full tour as well as being a, a fantastic standalone event. And you probably see it more than most, you know, with the Pro Tour, players can play on the outside boards, but even going and playing on the streaming board, mm. it's a completely different setup. So this environment prepares them for that perfectly, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, I think one of the best examples of that is you've worked me on, with me on the women's series, and we've seen players who have never been in front of a camera before and, and really, really struggle the first time they're on it and openly admit how nervous they are or how nervous they were. Um, and I've seen that on the Pro Tour as well when players have played on the stream for the first time. So, yeah, this will be a good grounding for players to go and play on the Pro Tour. You know, we have a bit of a crowding on Saturday nights as well, so players to appear on the Euro Tour perhaps in the future and, and other events, they'll feel more comfortable and it's kind of the right level for them to do that. And Henry, you're a local lad. Mm -hmm. How important is it that we tap into local communities and, and really get as many people here as possible? Because tickets are free for a Saturday mm -hmm. night, but just to give something back to the people in the community as well. Absolutely, it's, it's huge. And, and Portsmouth as a city has got a really good darting scene. Hampshire is a thriving area for darts in general. So this is at the perfect place at the perfect time. And I think we've seen over the last couple of weeks a lot of local players have come in to, to watch us on Saturday nights. But... One thing I think Portsmouth has been missing in general is a, is a sport, is a big sporting event that they can come to. They know it's, it's a home for them. And, you know, the opportunity that we've got here to, to tap into that for people just to, I mean, in general, just enjoy a Saturday night out at the darts. It's one of the great nights out. So I think if we can tap into that as much as possible, and I know we're looking at ways of getting as many people in as possible on Saturday nights, it'd be great because this place could be absolutely buzzing week upon week. Most definitely. And of the action you've seen here so far, who's impressed you the most, would you say? I mean, this week, Nathan's been absolutely spectacular. I mean, obviously, the five from five yesterday, perfect day for him. And obviously, he goes in his favourite today. But the three weeks in general, it's probably a player who didn't even qualify for Champions Week. And Conor Heenahan, I know he's unlucky to miss out in Group A, and then has the 115, the 107, the nine dart finish. He basically did everything over the qualify for, for Champions Week in the end. So he's probably been the standout, but you look at that field set up nice in a few weeks, isn't it? Absolutely. And Murph, you're probably gutted that he's just mentioned Connor's <laughs> name because you knew I was going to ask you the same question and he's probably someone that was in your mind as well. well I thought Henry was going to say me, but uh, I'd impress him the most, <laughs> but obviously not. We'll talk about that later, Henry. Um, <laughs> but I th the whole thing, that the drama that this has had, yeah, he mentioned the nine data, but we also had on Saturday night the first ever televised three-way nine dart shootout and that was really really gripping Andy Hamilton got through by one point by going for the 25 segment so I think that was really exciting um, Graham Usher for me has been uh, really impressive as well looking forward to watching him at Champions Week so yeah there are so many players that uh, are really stepping up to it what I do find an interesting dynamic as well is that some of the players that have been really consistent in the 
room that we had in Southampton for the Live League have never played on this stage before and their first appearance will be at Champions Week so it'll be interesting to see how they adapt to playing on the stage here. And I guess that is such an interesting point because that almost gives an advantage to the players who are now accustomed to playing in this environment. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think it does. Uh, there are some players that have obviously played on stages before. Um, Robert Owen, for example, has won the most in the previous sort of uh, guise of this tournament has reached the semi-finals at the UK Open. Um, but I, I do think it, we've seen players where it's taken them a few days to settle. Kieran Tian being the obvious example, finished bottom of Group A, ended up winning finals now a few weeks ago. Absolutely. And then looking ahead to today's action, because it is the final day of Group A action mm -hmm. here this morning, who do you think, of course, we know that it's Nathan Gervin who's currently occupying that top spot. Do you think he'll remain there? I think realistically, when you look at the advantage he's got in legs difference, I think if he wins three from five, he's through for me. And it was, we mentioned it yesterday, it was his attitude, wasn't it? Because he's really relishing being that player to beat today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. He really wants to um, win and win well, I think. He doesn't just want to sort of get through by a couple of points. He wants to dominate the group and go into finals night as the favourite and sort of maintain that mantle of being the player with the target on his back, being the favourite. I think he thrives off it, and I think that uh, he'll easily win three out of five today. I think he might even win five out of five today. And the exciting thing is that nobody's out of it. So even the likes of Jamie Kellen, who showed glimpses of what he can do yesterday and on Monday, nobody's out of it. They will then go into groups B and C. Who do you think could make a move in those groups of who you've seen so far? I still think that we've seen little spells from Alex Small where he's gone on runs of one, two, three legs where he's played really well. There was one spell where he think he hit three 180s at the start of legs consecutively. Um, so if he managed to settle in the same way that other players have over the course of the week, I think he probably could get through to finals night. Excellent. You heard it here first, so whatever you're going to bet on, don't bet on what this man's saying. We will join you at 9.30 for the start of today's action, so don't miss it.
Hello, good morning and welcome back to the Modus Super Series here at the Live Lounge. It's day three of week nine, which means it's the final day of Group A action, which also means that by the close of play today, we will have our first player through to finals night. Of course, the remaining players going into groups B and C. Chris Murphy alongside me to reflect on what we've seen already and, of course, look ahead to, to the day's action. Easy for me to say. Murph. Would you say there was a vast improvement in what we saw on day two? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, day two, we saw the players that we expected to be the favourites in this group step it up. I think it's very interesting that the player who's top of the table beat everybody below him. The same goes for second and the same goes for third. So, yeah, I think we saw those three players uh, really step it up in Nathan Gervin. Danny Lauby and uh, Sebastian Biewetsky. Yeah, absolutely. And Nathan Gervin having the perfect day, winning all five of his matches, a really, really impressive day from him. He was. And uh, one of the matches, it's just one game, wasn't there? 4 3 against Alex Small, where he was a little bit out of sorts, but he still managed to get the job done. And those can be the key games in qualifying for this when you're just blowing everyone, you know, sweeping everyone aside, then that's no problem at, at all. And He'll expect to do that in most of his matches, but winning ugly sometimes can be the difference between maybe getting that top spot and second or third. And it is, of course, as we can see there on the screen, a table of two halves now with Kelling, Small and Belmont in that bottom half. Of those three, I know you've been particularly impressed with Alec, haven't you? Just in little spurts, yeah, and if you can put it together for... But you only need to do it for four legs, don't you? You can get a 4-0 win. If you can do that a little bit more often, then I think he will get better results later in the week. But I can't see any of those three players now threatening the top three. So we're talking about Kelling, Small and Belmont playing at the same sessions in Group C. And if we've got a three-way race to qualify for finals night. And a word on Kelling as well, just quickly, because aside from Nathan Gervin, he's the only player to have over 40% checkout success. That's really impressive, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, and he's kind of needed it because in most matches he has been outscored. Uh, but that's the most important part of the game. Um, I think we've seen on the other side of the scale, Danny Lowby probably been the best scorer in the group, but his finishing stats haven't been fantastic. So uh, if he can sharpen that up, he could have the kind of day that Gervin did yesterday. Um, but the issue with Kellings, if you're relying on that, then that disappears for a day. Suddenly you're facing the prospect of losing four or five matches. And our first match, Nathan Gervin is in action. He's taken on Stefan Belmont. How do you see this one going? Stefan, Bel Stefan Belmont showed moments yesterday. He had that brilliant 1-4-1 one one checkout, which we're looking at now. Um, but he lost 4-0 to Nathan Gervin when they played. And I just get the sense that Gervin is fresh and ready and intends to do what he did yesterday. I don't see it being 4-0 again, um, but I would favour, I think most people watching would favour Gervin in that match. Um, but Belmont has shown incremental improvements game on game, day by day. Absolutely. And on day one, we were talking, weren't we, about how he was a slow starter. That certainly wasn't the case at Spells yesterday. Yeah. Um, sometimes the opposite, actually. Sometimes he was decent for the first couple of legs um, and then kind of tailed off in the match. So, again, older players are looking for that sort of golden mean, aren't they, that bit of consistency that they... That Gervin found yesterday um, and if any of the players in the bottom three can do that then they'll finish top of that that mini table and whoever does it in the top three will finish top of that mini table absolutely it's as simple as that let's get into the action shall we and hand over to Henry Deacon Abby morning everyone welcome along to Wednesday here at the Moda Super Series where we will decide the first place into Saturday night's final and to kick us off is Stefan Belmont up against Nathan Gervin, the man who leads the table overnight, going into the final day's action on 16 points. But there is a chasing pack of Danny Lauby and Sebastian Biowetsky hot on his tail to try and snatch that plate at Saturday night's finals. Although Gervin does have a 15 leg difference lead over both the American and the pole. But what we're going to see from Stefan Belmont today, he's slowly getting better as the days go on here at the Super Series. And he's going to have to be his tip-top best right from the very get-go hey, against Gervin. First, Stefan to throw first. Game Leads on. the way, going into the final day. Owen right, Binks is your referee throughout the rest of the week. And it is Belmont who gets wonderful Wednesday underway here at the Super 40. Series. Right, a 15 games to be decided. 
today and it will decide who will not oh, just win the group but also who's going to be placed in the other groups this week second and third will be placed into group b and then fourth fifth and sixth will find their way in group c that takes place tomorrow and friday morning from half past nine happy to say that with me in the commentary booth today is chris murphy chris Morning, Henry. How are you today? Not too bad. Not too bad. Always looking forward to a good day of tungsten drama, and we're certainly going to get that today. Absolutely. And One as I was saying to Abby at the top, it does have the feel, doesn't it, of a tale of two tables. Um, a little kind of, not meaningless table at the bottom, 59. but maybe for bragging rights and confidence going into Group C between the bottom three featuring Stefan Belmont and then Gervin leading the pack at the top with himself ahead of Lauby and Biawetsky. Um, perhaps, Henry, I don't know what you think of this, it'll be the games one. against each other in those three leagues that make the difference. Although, it does set up the potential for spoilers, doesn't it, Stefan, trying to be just that in this game? Exactly that. It's a table of two halves. Ninety-four. You Stephanie think Rickon possibly the top three is set in stone unless someone in the bottom of that pack on six points makes a run for it today and maybe there's a slip from Bioretsky or Lauby. But I think Belmont's the, the player out of those in that bottom no, half of the group is the one we're most Nathan intrigued by. In fairness, they've all kind of cancelled each other out in the fact that they've shown brilliance at times, but it just hasn't quite been consistent enough. But Belmont's going to have a chance at the double 18 to win the opening leg of the day 56. with Fro. Stephen, you require 36. And this would be just the start he would have wanted. Just to settle himself into Stephen Wednesday Belmont. here at the Super Series and give himself a 1-0 lead over Nathan Gurn. If you're going to play Gurvin, if you're Belmont's mind of like thinking, you'd think, well, let's have it first game of the day. Yeah, good point. And particularly after that 4-0 defeat yesterday. And just want to point out, because Abby's been giving me a few digs over the last couple of days, that that is my first prediction correct. I did say it won't be 4-0 again. And Belmont has delivered, so well done, Chris Murphy. Self-praises, still praise. 59. Phone to yourself in the third person, Chris. 100. Well, the question in this group is about three people, isn't it? Who will be the top three? Of course, who's going to be the number one and... I mean, we've chatted off air before, Henry, and in the little preview show that we did on One YouTube. By the way, hundred. those of you who just can't wait for an early morning dose of darts debate, then you can tune in 55. to the Moda Super Series YouTube channel for a, a little mini preview with Abby and the couple of commentators. Today it was myself and Henry, but I have to admit, Henry, I've had enough. I'll be leaving you at the end of this session, replaced by 85. someone with rather more expertise than myself, but we will reveal that later in the show. Am I doing something wrong? Because I seem <laughs> as if I'm getting rid of commentators all the time. They not want to work with me or something. Yeah, it's not, it's not me, it's you, Henry. <laughs> 83. The Gervin is playing decent darts, but his body language wouldn't reflect that. He's not happy with... 96, making you record 123. Some of the visits that he's producing. He'll be happy with the ball here. Game shot the and second he's bedded leg. it absolutely Nathan perfectly. Gervin. It is as easy as 1-2-3 for Nathan Gervin. Indeed it is, and that could be... So look at Stephen to blue touch first. paper lit for the day. He's averaging 94.2, but... The way he was playing yesterday, you're expecting big things from the young Scott. 60. And we saw last week with Conor Heenahan, didn't we, where he won five from five on Tuesday. And we'll probably having a similar conversation about it looks as if, if he can just win a fair share of matches, he's through. And we saw it didn't correlate. I suppose there is a danger sometimes when you lead overnight that you can... Perhaps with the wrong mindset, feel too comfortable 60. with the league that you got at the top. Yeah, and I think that's a great example. Connor 
I mean, not just Conor Heenan, but what about Scott Walters? Mm. Shorter group, Group C, won his first five matches last Thursday. I joked to him in an interview that he didn't have to turn up the next day. I didn't think he'd take it literally. 28. Is that another one of your predictions there? Well, yeah, I think that was a bit of a, a, bit of a curse I put on Walters. It, nobody could have predicted what unfolded 90, what? last week. Not even Mystic Meg and Nostradamus combined. Well, even this... 180. Won't be getting 170. Belmont down to a checkout, which means that he doesn't have to go for this, even if he had found the two treble 20s. 96. By the Is way, it... if you're going to dig me out about predictions, Henry, let's be having yours. Uh, Gervin to top the group. Yes, and I, I, and I think the top three are set in stone. In that 99. order. 99, Nathan, you require I'd say 74. So, yeah. There we have it. Game there we have that. Nathan Gervin getting a Nathan break of throw. Gervin. A very clean kill of 74. We haven't actually seen a dart miss at double yet in this game. One dart for Belmont hit the 36 in leg Public one. Nathan to the bullseye first. check out of one, two, three Game in leg two for the Scott. And then that nice, clean, clinical kill of 74 for the league leader. However, you do want me to put my head above the parapet. One I think Alex hundred. Moore might win the daily table. I'm expecting a push from him today. That's a big call. But I do agree and said to Abby at the top of the show, we've seen glimpses from Alex Moore. 57. Just not prolonged periods of excellence. I think it's a statement you could probably make about all of the bottom three in this group. We've seen signs, but we haven't seen spells. Well, the signs are looking good for Nathan Gervin. Of course, a couple of pretty decent mentors in his corner, hasn't he? Alan Souter, whose academy 40. was a product of, and Chris Mason offering advice as well. Mace will be 130. Back. Is he back next week? Yes, I believe he's... I think he might even be here on, on Saturday, potentially, but don't don't quote me on, on that. Does that mean that our guest commentator would have had enough of me already? 131. Well, he's got all the time in the world here. That won't matter. Gervin 28. started strongly here. And Belmont isn't going to be in finishing range after these darts. Well, Switzerland has four official languages. Well, he needs a fifth fear, Stefan Belmont. He needs the darts to do the talking. 94. Nathan, you record 103. Can Nathan make his darts do the talking? 11 for double 16. 87. And that was nearly word perfect. Dart perfect from Gervin. He's going to return, though, for the double eight upon his return for a 3-1 lead. Yeah, it's far from perfect from his opponent in this leg as well. Barely Nine, halfway three. through after a dozen darts. Nathan, requires 16. He's on a finish after 15, but you don't fancy him to come back. Maybe more so now. That's awkward. That's very, very awkward. No score. That's unlucky. Stephen, you he went for 58. the half of the bed that was available and could not have been closer without going in. But no doubtful Dodger act happening here from Stefan Belmont. 58. Nathan, you require 16. He's being kept under lock and key so far. Well, this, this was a, a game of... Game shot on the four flag. Pin the tail Nathan on the donkey. Gerber. He'd be pretty close, wouldn't he? With all of those darts right on the wire. But finally... He if finds the Stephen to throw first. required Game segment on. and is now just one away. All those misses at double have seen his average, by the way, drop from 100 to less than 90. Shows how fluid averages can be in this short format. 99. Because if you look at the, the scoring phase, in the Tum Plus throws, Gervin 6-2 up. Tum 40 throws, Gervin's 3-1 up. Belmont's got the only max of the matches you could see on the graphic that now departs our screen. Maybe Bellman 
Could get a second. No, not on this occasion. 140. I think until we do reveal who the uh, guest commentator is, Henry Meyer, worthy replacement. We'll give a few clues throughout the day, shall we? Until it's revealed. Not now. We won't start now. We'll start in the next match. And I'm going to leave my big shoes under the table for... Here's the first oh, clue. Too. Him to fill. That's narrowed it down by 50%. You don't know how I'm spelling Phil. 99. <laughs> Stephen, you require 170. The big fish on offer for both players. Making a splash here. The Swiss. Going who takes out on the, fifth leg. the sweet finish. The 170 from absolutely nowhere. And Belmont is back in it. Simply He's as happy as a big first. fish on the stage. But it is Gervin who has the darts for the match. It could be an act of darting divides that could end in vain. Didn't give his opponent a shot at the very same checkout. The biggest solved the lot. 121. I know that his uh, wife lives and breathes every dart when she watches him. 57. She'd just be picking herself back up off the floor, having leaped off whatever sofa or chair she was sat on. 97. She did send him in with some chocolate yesterday, actually. Mrs. Belmont, I've not seen any of it. I have to ask the production crew see where it went. I can imagine where it went. One hundred and twenty-one. Well, the one-two-one doesn't leave Belmont on a makeable out shot, and having just taken out one hundred and seventy, you would have fancied something meaty again. But he could be in a good spot to break here. Gervin may well have to take out the 146 in a game that has just completely turned around. 10. Leave double. 16. Gervin must hit. And won't. And Belmont returns for the double 16 to make it free apiece. And as no, Chris rightly said, this 170 has changed the game on its head. Belmont's really upped it here. Well, that's the first dart he's missed. Game a double in the game, play. but he doesn't make a habit Stephen of it. Stephen Belmont. And he's forced his way back into contention. Not only that, has he come from 3-1 behind, from he's Bonner actually got the Stephen's darts in first. the decider. Game on. May we already see a huge moment in this final day's action in Group A. Defeat here. We still put Gervin in an okay position. He'll still be on 16 points. He'll still have a sizable lead and the legs different. But Danny Lowby would then have the opportunity in the next match against Alex Small to go level on points and apply 100. maximum pressure on the young Scott. Our times are changing. Are we seeing the Heenahan effect played out again? The Walters effect could be possible. I don't see him losing all five. Just... Can't see that happening to Nathan Gervin. But then they said that about Roy McElroy all those years ago. Teed you up for that one. 59. Well, Gervin in a bit of trouble here. He's got options on 305. Starts on 18s. Now needs a couple of treble 20s to leave the finish. Isn't going to get them. 58. I saw Danny Baggish put a bit of a debate about that on social media yesterday. It was interesting. About what's the best way to go. Because if you hit the treble 18, you still do need 96. a couple of trebles. Well, he's himself on 110, where he will definitely start on the 20s. and 100. Right at the very get-go on Wednesday, we could have a sizable moment if 
Stefan Belmont can take out this 110 for the match. And across to the 18, 72 remains. Well, we've seen the maximum finish Nathan, you record 147. in this. Is it going to be won with a 147 break? And now he's got an intruder on the stage. That's all he needs. Big moment. And he's not up to it, and Belmont will get match darts. 58. Stephen, you require Put him 56. on eight points. It would keep Gervin on 16. Tops he wants. But it drags just underneath. He's had two match darts, and Nathan, Nathan Gervin could complete 89. an act of darting escapology if he can take out the 89. Once again, sets himself. 20 segment. Needs the bolt. We've seen it hit twice in this match. Gervin and we've seen it hit again to win the match. Nathan Gervin. Gervin grabs glory. He snatches victory from the jaws of defeat after Belmont bounced back from 3-1 behind in a brilliant opener to today's session both players averaging around that 90 mark belmont with the only 180 in the game he had that beautiful 170 finish as well that really seemed to have turned the tungsten tide but gervin with a one two three and crucially that second bullseye finish for him the 89 to win the match picks up the points and pulls further clear at the top of the table Good morning. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where we've just witnessed Nathan Gervin win his eighth successive match at the Super Series. He had to come through a last leg decider in what was a topsy-turvy match. The Scottish youngster looked to be heading towards his first defeat in eight, but held his nerve. He's taken out some big combination finishes this week. He added a one, two, three on the bull early on. And despite that big fish finish from Belmont that you can see there, he held on to win 
in the last leg decider on the bull yet again a fantastic win showing all that scottish steel early on this morning to keep himself top and in contention of course to top group a there you can see it he moves on to 18 points danny lauby of course up next he's on 14 he can keep that gap to two if he wins this next match he's taking on alex small danny of course performed considerably better yesterday, more to the standard that we expect to see from him. Here we can see him taking out that 152, the highest checkout of this week so far. Of course, his opponent then went on to equal that, but it was a fantastic checkout in that match. Let's get into the action then with Chris Murphy and also the worst parallel parker that I have ever seen in my life in Henry Deacon. Thank you, Abby. I'll drop the local taxi number on a post-it note a little bit later on. So then, game two of our day sees Danny Lauby, who is second in the league table, take on Alex Small. I can't believe she said that live on air. Um, but for Danny Lauby, huge game now for him. It's that dis difference between possibly group on or group over. And perhaps he would have watched that last leg between Belmont and Gervin and... Yeah, Perhaps felt Danny that Thelma would have put the, the turnaround in there. And I wonder how the psychology of that, the practice room, could come into play. Yeah, good point. And there's certainly a few parallels between this game and that one. We've Lauby at the top Ooh, of the table three. and Small at the bottom of the bunch. And Gervin is now perfectly parked in position 100. one. Lauby very neatly slotted in between him and Biowetsky. 100. Can you, you just park it, Beth? Well, you can't, by the sounds of it. <laughs> One anyway, we must all, I wasn't even there, but yeah, I know that a few people have been traumatised by the whole experience. You're starting oh, to go on my gears. Yeah, I'll give you a break. <laughs> 97. You must have been tired. Right, that's it anyway. Done. Henry is rubbish at parallel parking. That's official. But he's not bad in the old commentary box. So, do your thing. Ironically, it was this tournament that gave me the break. But let's get back to the first leg. Alex Small there leaving a bogey on 159. Whereas Lauby finds himself for 107 after 15. And again, you sense even at this early juncture, he's got to win. Actually... Where were you where were you all going last time that I wasn't invited to? Seven. That's what I want to know. We'll, we'll discuss that in leg two because Lauby wants 107 here. Tops. Eighty seven. A ton plus to open up his 100. day. Alex Moore returns for a ton top of his own. Tops. Sixty. Oh. But two nice darts on and the wire which came and went. Games yeah, on the they first were very leg. close. Danny Lauby. We're just seeing those little moments, aren't we, in these matches early on. Like, seems to be keeping the, the separation between Second the top three and the bottom first. three. But it could have been different. It could have been very interesting had Belmont got the job done against Gervin. And it could have already been oh, interesting this three. game had one of those two darts found the red bit. Parked between the lines, you might say. 96. Well, Nathan Gervin wants to keep Lauby at bay today. And if he does, he'll get himself through to Saturday night. He'll get the perfect ticket to do just that. You do realise that you're actually taking the mick out of yourself here, Henry. 100. Sometimes you need a bit of self-deprecation, Murph. Although I don't know why it was a good idea to ask Owen Binks for direction on how to park. Owen Binks is a... Uh, 34. What he says goes in this tournament. He is the man keeping order. There he is. One of our team of referees. 57. Binks, Hinks, Corstafine, the main men here at the Moda Super Series. 48. And our team of comms is going to be growing as well. We mentioned that we're going to having special guests and we mentioned we're going to give you a 57. few clues the next one 96 
is that I would say that this commentator ninety six. I mean, you're going Premier League twenty two. Ninety-seven. Danny requires seventy-nine. Albi has been a level above small in terms of the league table, but 71. small could get himself level if he Danny can take out 25. this twenty-five. This would be for a hold and throw, and no to level us up at one apiece. But he's hit the treble nine. Danny he's bust the score, eight. and could that be a turning point early on in this match? Game because the double the four goes. Lauby breaks. Lauby. He opens up a two-nil lead. And that could have been a criminal mistake from Alex Small. Well, it's the, it's the conventional it's route, Danny isn't to it, throw 25 first. to go for a nine. But that is one of the issues with it. Hit the treble. 80. You, uh, you bust your score. 27, it's too many. But there are other areas. People, Some people say go one double 12. I 60. actually... Oh, but there are other routes before I go on to that. I, I've seen Robert Thornton in consecutive visits. He goes 17 double four. Seen him bust on the treble and the double. So a lot of jeopardy in that route. Hey, do you want. But I do like that one double 12 route. I also like the five double 10 employed by players. 100. That, that way inclined. Sixty. But it's all Lowby with part thanks to that bust. One hundred. He would move within two points of Gervin again. Remember, they still have to play each other, so it's not all signed one and sealed. One hundred and eighty, Danny. One hundred and twenty-one. Small fires in a, a one eighty to get a point in front of Lowby, but treble seventeen and the ball would seal 42. the leg. That's not happening. I think it require Is there a way back here for Small? Not now, he's hit the single one. 80. I, I wonder in, in that scenario when, when you go for the one change, just try and ensure that the first dart hit the big trade. Try and hit it towards the top of the treble wire to guarantee. Oh, talking about lack of guarantees. lowby has gone high 40. on the 20 when he was on 60. Game's and it's been a game of mistakes Alex in the Moore. setup approach play so far. And Alex Moore breaks back after he bust. 25 in the last leg. Well, Danny Lowby missed the board first. with 60 remaining. Right, it's been an ever strewn game on the approach play. Just wonder, Henry, if 43. having seen small bust earlier, Lowby was thinking too much about whether he might bust by hitting the treble 20 there, 100. which is why he chose to go high, and ended up missing the, the segment completely. 60. One hundred and thirty four. Problem is, though, it's, it's one of the basics of the game. Forty four. Yeah, you shouldn't be missing entirely. But I, I do think as well, 60, we, we spoke about it yesterday. Hey, it's one of those really awkward finishes, isn't it, with two darts? Even if it, it's almost like he was trying to hit tops to leave an open bed. So you didn't play it safe enough, but then when you do play it safe, you end up blocking yeah. tops, don't you? So it's a difficult one. It's a stacker's double, isn't it? 130. And that is perfect from Lauby, as good as it could have got. 56 after 12, and he's going to get time. Oh, and this is for his record, second break in succession. Tops, double 10. Games and it is 3-1, and Lauby is a leg Danny away. Lauby. From keeping himself in the picture at the top of Group A and to pile the pressure on Who Nathan Gervin, who they Game do on. face off against each other in both of their next matches. Do you think that Gervin will be worried at all by this performance? I know he'll be two points behind him ahead of a game against him, but I don't think we've seen a high level from Labby in this one. Thing is, though, we, we saw on Monday, Lauby can hit different kinds of levels. He can Steve, play he around here and get points, but we also saw him raise the level to about a 96, 97. And I think both players will know the oh, consequences of that match, and that can do one thing or another in, in, in terms of confidence, in terms of standards, in terms Steve, of levels. Steve. But Nathan Gervin knows that if he wins that game, he's pretty much got one foot in the final. And that, again, can be a double-edged sword. 39. 
Yeah, things could be settled pretty quickly here on Wednesday in terms of who makes it through in that top spot. And gets 59. The luxury of two days off before finals night, or things could be extended and go right down to the wire. We will know more over the next hour or so. Do stay with us here on Sporty Stuff TV. 60. And of course, for those of you watching on YouTube, welcome along. Don't forget to subscribe to the Moda Super Series YouTube channel where we're going to have plenty of content over the next few days and few weeks. We're going to grab some stuff with the players and things like that. We're going to be very interactive across our social media platforms. So do hey, give us a follow as well on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at MSS Darts. Alex Small looks to take out the 140. He may have to to stay in the match. Double 10. A whisker of a while away. And now Lauby is two darts away from the win. And the double. Go in the double. Shot on the match. Danny Lauby. Double success for the players at the top of the table. The top two win their opening matches. Gervin 4 3 over Stephen Belmont. And Danny Lauby eases to a 4 1 success over Alex Small ahead of their clash at the peak of the pile. That's coming up. In a couple of games' time, but before that, Sebastian Biewetsky will take on Jamie Kelling.
Hello, good morning and welcome back to the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth. We're two games in and we've seen the two players at the top of the table get their first points on the board already. There you can see it, Danny Lauby, the 4-1 winner in a game where setter play wasn't really a strength for either player early on. Errors from both Danny Lauby, not at the level we saw from him yesterday, but crucially doing enough to get a win on the board. 57% checkout success there, as you can see. As for Alex Small, well, he came into today's action having hit the most 180s out of anyone in group a he added another one to his tally today but not hitting the levels that we saw glimpses of during yesterday's action we'll take a little look at what that does to the table as you can see danny lauby now two points behind nathan girvin in that race to qualify for finals night this morning but moving on to our next game we do have sebastian biawetsky taking on jamie kellen jamie kellen actually coming into this one with the only player aside from Nathan Girvin to have an overall checkout percentage over 40%. But there you can see Sebastian Biawetsky finishing, not really been a strength of his so far this week, but taking out that 152, leveling the highest checkout that we've seen so far, both him and Danny Lauby hitting that finish. So let's move on then to our next game. I'll be a bit kinder to Henry this time and just say his name, Henry Deacon and Chris Murphy. Yeah, thanks, Abby. Very charitable. Uh, Sebastian Biowetsky is looking to follow in the footsteps of his fellow top three players and not be very charitable to the bottom three after both Gervin and Lauby got the better of Belmont and Small in this breakaway league in Group A. And we have seen some some good and some bad, I would say. So far today. Okay, first leg is Sebastian to throw the first. first match was Game drilling, on. exciting, dramatic. Had a couple of big bullseye finishes as well. In fact, Stefan Bormont superseded the, the 152s that we hit yesterday, didn't he, with that 170 checkout. And Danny Lauby just kind of eased to victory without having to go through the gears in his 4 1 win against Alex Small. Uh, Biowetsky. It's now like it's almost like the gauntlet has been laid down, isn't it? And he has to follow suit. You sense that he's at an absolute minimum going to have to win four from five. You really think he's going to have to win five from five today if he's going to challenge at the top. And I suppose this is the, the issue with Biowetsky. If he does lose this 41. first game, he, he could dangerously look over his shoulder if someone goes on a march today. We've seen it before where you think players might be comfortable in third place in the table and then suddenly results begin to develop. One and then you're suddenly chasing. You're the one chasing and that third spot isn't a certainty. And then you've got to snap yourself out of that cycle Nine, straight six. away. And that's not easy, but this has been a really good start for Bioetsky to the day. Leaving 66 after 12 with the darts. 140. Sebastian, and so what will be the route 66. for the 66? Taking a detour. Double eight. 50. Destination not Taking arrived at yet. 60. And Abby mentioned Kelling's finishing prowess. Is he going to back it up in the very first leg? Not quite. And he'll be disappointed 100. because that was plumb. Sebastian, you require 60. It most certainly was, and so double eight. And again, we said yesterday, the way the first dart lies on the board, it could be a bit awkward, Game but it wasn't leg. in the end for Biowetsky. A Biowetsky. good last start. Sees him win his first leg of the day, the opening leg of the match. He leads Jamie Kelling by a leg to nil. And Second leg is Jamie to Kelling throw first. just needs to get as many points on the board as possible today. He knows that most likely, most probably, he may not get into Group B. But he wants to get himself in the best shape possible, give himself as much confidence as possible going into tomorrow's action. Yeah, all of Kelling, Small and Belmont 84. only won one match yesterday, each having won two matches apiece the day before. Six. So it does, we were talking about Biowetsky having to answer the question posed by the top two. It does also give Kelling the opportunity to make his mark as the best of the rest, doesn't it, this match? Give yourselves much confidence going into most likely Group C tomorrow where 
The bottom three in this Ooh, group will be gone. joined by Aaron Monk, Kurt Parry, and Lee Cox tomorrow and Friday from 9.30. And then second and third will be in Group B alongside, have a listen to this for a casting lineup, uh -huh. Colin Osborne, Matt Dennant, and Scott Williams. That's going to be some group tomorrow night. 55. Just looking at the next few fixtures in this group, and I think we're going to start to see over the next hour or so what's going to happen to Danny Lowby because he takes on Nathan 58. Gervin next and his match after that. Round about half 11 will be against Sebastian Biowetsky. So he's got the other top One two to hundred. play. If he wins both of those games, he's going to find himself at the top of the table. If he loses both, he's probably going to find himself out of contention to take that top spot. And because of his cushion over the Nine, players six, below, Jamie, require 101. his group could slowly peter out. Double 16. 69. Sebastian, you require 104. Can't get a dart at the same target. 56. So Kelly Jamie will return. 32. And Based on what we've seen so far, will hit and has hit. Jamie Kelly. And so level we are at one apiece. Blue touch paper yet to be so lit Sebastian in this particular match. We've seen moments where potentially someone One could get a ribbon a going, but just waiting for someone to go through the gears a little bit here. One I wonder what Seb would have been thinking going into today because he's got a healthy lead over the three below him. But he's got a lot of ground to make 85. up on those above him. Is there a danger again that he he could see today be a, be a day where he may not be playing for much because 85. he may not be able to win the group, and it looks as if third could be secured quite early. Has to win all five for me, Biowetsky, if he's going to win the group. Has to beat both of Lauby and Gervin and get one the job done against the bottom three. That will help him against one of them here. Yeah, he. If he manages to match One Gervin on points, it's unlikely that he's going to overhaul that healthy leg difference that Gervin's still got, despite only winning his first match by one leg. 96. But he's in a good spot in leg three here, the pole. On tops after 12. Eighty five. Sebastian, you're going 40. For 13 dart leg. Games on the Double third. 10 will do for 14, Sebastian and we're just Bielewski. seeing Sebastian Biowetsky go up a level here. The average has moved on to 87.3. Probably gets Jamie to How throw can that. Kelling respond in leg four? And this has kind of been Kelling's base level all week, hasn't it? 80. Around about the 83, 84 mark. The Robin Hood there from Jamie Kelling. Unfortunate. 135. They do teach you to try and follow the darts that are there, 98. don't they? You've done that too well and end up getting nothing for your trouble. Even in soft tip, it wouldn't count. 78. Actually, it might be because it might force the, the dart that's already in the board to hit it again. Ninety-four. We see a number of players in this competition play a bit of soft tip as well. Akira Suzuki, we saw earlier this 85. year, a very prominent player, perhaps the most prominent player on the soft tip circuit, along with Paul Lim. Very big market for it out in Asia and the hey, Far East. Jamie, 142. So back here in the United Kingdom, Kelling wants 142 to make it 2 2. And so Bioetsky will return for 110. To break a throw and a 3 1 lead and to get the opportunity to provide a healthy opening win to his day. One dart. 
at double 16. Jamie required 52. Goes wide. So Ketting returns for 52. 4 2 2. Gave Making Jean a game of it. Play. Jamie Kelling. Jamie Kelling. Just keeps himself hot on the heels of Sebastian Biowetsky, who does have the advantage of throwing first in this match. They've but it's Sebastian to throw first. Game one on. One leg. One opportunity might be all it takes for Kelling, who's living up to that checkout percentage so far. 50% in this 140. match. forty. He's hitting half of his attempts. Biowetsky, roughly a quarter. 140. Again, it's been another trademark of Kellen this week when he's got the opportunities on the double. By and large, he has taken them. But at times, it's been the scoring the phase of a leg, which has denied him points, denied him victories. Because his opponents Four, just had a little five. bit too much time at times to pin that double. I know we say scores for show and doubles for dough, but if you are severely Please struggling in the not. scoring department, then you're not going to get the opportunities at double. He did beat Biowetsky 4-1 on 100. Monday. Jamie Kelling. And was only beaten in the last leg, last leg decider by this opponent yesterday. So it, he knows it's a, a tricky test. Does the Polish player. Needed a second treble, Sebastian gets a second treble. 45. And so Biowetsky now needs this one four five to keep hold of his throw. And how quickly these best of seven no, games change. Kelling could break and put himself on the hill. We've chosen tops. Is it the right choice? 36. He had plenty Sebastian of it to look at. You can 52. see from that camera angle there. Biowetsky will get the opportunity. To edge ahead again. All on throw so far in this match. 44. But it might not remain that way. Jamie require 40. Because Kelling does return for tops. Game shot. For the break. Flag. And it could Jamie well be Kelling. make or break for Sebastian Biowetsky now. If he harbors hopes, harbors ambitions of winning Group A, he's going to have to win so the remaining Jamie two to legs, you feel, first. to win this match. Game to on. do so, if he loses this, then. He may have a nervous little look over his shoulder with both Kelling and Belmont on eight points if JK can get over the line. But that's an opening for Seb. It would all be almost impossible. It would certainly be improbable for Biowetsky to move up to top of the table if he doesn't win this match by the end of the day because he's already six points adrift of Nathan Gervin. That could become eight. So he would only, he'd have to win all his and hope Gerben lost all his from that point and overturn a massive deficit, which would be at least 15 legs if he loses this game. 100. It's effectively a four game swing. 100. With only four games remaining for each of the players in this group from the conclusion of this match. And you don't want to go anywhere after this is done because we're going to see the top 100. two in action as Nathan Gervin takes on Danny Lowby. And that's why this victory is so key for Seb. You kind of hope for a Lowby victory in that one because it bunch the pair together and just give them an opportunity to maybe sneak through via the back door. 97. Jamie Rock 130. He's himself on 64 unless Kellen can take out the 138, which he won't. So Biowetsky will return for 64 for a break no, and to take us all the way. Nice you require take us all the way and to effectively take control. It's only one dart. One dart. Game shot and that's all leg. he needs. That's all Sebastian it takes. And so now one leg will decide the destination of this darts match. And here's Biowetsky with Seven the darts. From final leg, it's Sebastian to throw first. A Game leg on. that could dictate his destiny. If he wins it, he's still in with a shout of progressing through group A. Okay, it'll be a tall Nine, order, but he still have a chance, loses it. And he will just look over his shoulder a little bit with JK and Belmont both on eight. 
one. And he oh. doesn't want to then lose the next one and then really have a nervous look. A reminder, it was 4-3 to Sebastian Biowetsky when the pair met yesterday, but he was throwing second in that match. In fact, I better double check that. 140. No, he wasn't. He was throwing first. I do apologise. So it's exactly the same situation. 100. He's put himself on a finish first. He leaves the fish. Saw Stefan Bellman get it in the Aye, first game five. of the day, but so that was in vain. And BOX, he doesn't even have to go for it now. He's got six for it. Moves across to treble 18 to leave himself in 76 after 12. Kelling needs two trebles. Well, he needs something as an absolute minimum. 100. Sebastian requires Manages 76. to find one in the middle of those two darts. Piotrowski is going to get one at tops to win it. Game and only needs one at Sebastian tops to win it. To keep his hopes of progressing through Group A alive. He does serve a 90.77 average. Four from 11 on the checkout. It's a high out of 76, which we just saw there. And so he is still in the race. But when we return after this short break, we're going to see the top two contenders to progress in action as Nathan Gervin takes on Danny Lauby.
Hello, welcome back to the Modus Super Series where we have just seen Sebastian Biowetsky keep his hopes of finishing top alive there. You can see coming through a last leg decider. We mentioned Kellen's impressive finishing stats before that game, 43% for him in that one, but too many trebleless visits, the issue for him in that match. Seb's scoring power was certainly superior throughout though. He keeps himself in the race for top spot, as I just mentioned his finishing improving significantly as that match went on. If we take a little look at the table, we can see that next up it is a top of the table clash between Gervin and Lauby. Lauby with the opportunity to get joint on 18 points with Gervin if he is to win that. But if you look at the legs difference, column it is Gervin with a significant advantage there and at the bottom of the table three players still on six points so that gap getting even bigger between the top three and the bottom three so as I said it is Nathan Gervin who is up next we've already seen him take out a one two three this morning this a one two four from yesterday's action against Stefan Belmont we've seen some really really impressive combination finishing from him over the course of the three days but this, the top of the table clash, we're about to get underway and it could be a really, really significant one in the final standings of the day. So in the company of Chris Murphy and Henry Deacon, let's get this one underway. Thanks, Abby. Here we go then, this top of the table tussle between Nathan Gervin and Danny Lauby. And probably a bigger game for Lauby than it is for Gervin. It is recoverable for him if he were to lose the match. But you would think that if he wins it, then probably, probably Gervin will go on and grab that spot at finals night. Six players so from the 12 like in action to throw first. this week will be on that stage Denmark. on Saturday in front of a live audience. And you could be in that audience as well. Tickets available for free from dartshop.tv. 57. Nathan Gervin could be on the brink. 60. If he can claim victory in this one. He'd go on to 20 points. Four points clear of Lowry, but as Murph rightly mentioned, the legs difference 42. is a bonus point for him at the minute. I think if Gervin wins this one, I, I can't see no, how he would go through from this juncture. Now he's going to have to do something a little bit special to get through. He's more than capable of doing it. Absolutely. 44. Sixty. Just a tentative and cagey start to this. And both players know the significance of this match. And we mentioned actually in the build-up to this in, in the last game. These types of fixtures can go one way or the other. Because of the situation, the circumstance and what's at stake, it can either inspire or it could make it a cage encounter. Yeah, I think that even though it's a slow 45. start from Gervin in this game, three scores 45. now in the 40s, 45. it's actually Lauby who's got much more to lose in defeat here. 65. See, so you wouldn't really see cause for, for Gervin to get nervy. Sixty. Danny require eighty. Well, to break. Double top. Game shot on the and first. Maybe Gervy will Lowby. get nervy because Lauby has broken in leg one. When he needed a break at some point, why didn't you do it at the earliest possible Second opportunity? That's exactly what Danny Lauby has done. He opens up a one nil lead, has the throw in the second. Eighty one. But can the musician from America string together a run of results? 140. That'll get him over the line. Speaking of a run of results, it's eight straight wins now for Nathan Gervin in this 140. group. 140. And is looking to stop an extension of that excellent set of score lines. But it hasn't been without 100. drama, has it? He had a, an off game yesterday, a 4-3 win towards the back end of the day and a 4-3 win this morning against Stefan Belmont. 
That one was against Alex Moore yesterday when he posted his worst average of the week so far, but still got over the line. 60. He could have so easily lost that game, curve and that 170 checkup from Belmont. 58. Felt may have been the game changer. When it went to a last leg, you fancied the Swiss player to go on and win it. And he's not really got out the traps in this one either yet, Gervin. And so it's presented Lelby. One. Change of an opportunity, but 96, 96 here for Gervin to get the break back. Perfect start. Game Perfect on the second leg. From Nathan, Nathan Gervin, who does level up the game at 1 1, does break back and does take back control of the contest. Third look, it's Nathan to throw first. Break is not a break, we're out of hold, as they famously say. And we're back where we started. Which. 60. When you consider the start that Nathan Gervin made for the match, you'd be more than happy that he's in this situation. One and he's growing 100. into the game now. Yeah, bounce back with a 14 dart leg. Deny Lauby a shot of the 81 that he left. 100. Following this, it will be Kelling against Belmont. I mean, the, the table at the start of the day was a, a table of two halves, as you coined it, Henry, and it's become even more so described by the One first set of results, the top three beating the bottom three. Speaking of threes. 100, Nathan, you've got 161. And suddenly we're seeing a right royal turnaround in this game. He looked as if midway through the second leg, Danny Lowby had full control of it. It was at his mercy, but Nathan Gervin has wrestled it back in his direction. The average has gone up from around 71 to just under 87. That's how much he's improved over the last leg and a half. That's a bit of a flyer. So he only gets one at tops. 29. But that flies into the single one. Yeah, shaky visit there from the Scot. The, the nine didn't really matter. He was likely to only get one dart double anyway, but he could be punished to the hilt here. As Lowby threatens a big one four Maybe four. That dart at the one did matter because he should have been coming back with three darts at double here. Instead... It'll be two at double 16, and that becomes one at double eight. Game shot the third. But he does get over the line. Nathan go. Surviving a dart to be broken, holding, and getting his nose in front for the first time in this top of the table duel. Four blankets, Danny to throw first. That could have been a key moment, but Gervin recovered from that mini mistake. 80. And we saw in Lauby's first game, didn't we, against Alex Small? We saw a bust on 25. We saw. Missed darts at the board when 60 was left. Didn't hold to the result. 96. So they can be game changing. And also the other thing Danny Lowby's got to consider here is he's going to lose. If he loses by no, a big margin, not. then he's pretty much done, you'd think. 59. Yeah, Nathan Gervin, for him, this is the key match of all the five he will play today. This is the one that can put distance between him and his nearest rival in this group. 85. I was so bold as to say I think he might win all five again in the little chat we had on YouTube at the start of the, the day, Henry. And the way he's bounced back from a real lacklustre opening leg fills me with even more confidence. 85. Danny Rick, 167. We're seeing levels from Gervin. And Nate, Nathan Gervin leads 152. It was what Danny Lowby got in that brilliant game with BOX. Yes, they both got a 152 finish in that game. It was actually the highest finish in the entirety of the group until the big fish from Belmont. 44. Danny but Lowby here wants. In comparison, a measly sum of 36, but it's a Danny big leg for him because it keeps him in the game at 2-2. Two, two, and it is a best of three race in what could be the biggest game in Group A. Yeah, it was all about the setup shot there for Danny Lowby. Put the pressure on. 
Nathan Gervin on that 152 by scoring 131 to leave the double 18. 95. Which he duly hit. And it's deadlock again. And you see Lauby with the higher average by some distance as well. Much of that down to that first leg where Gervin hadn't really woken up. He had woke up at the start of the day. Brilliant match against Belmont to get the Wednesday action underway. Reminder, this is the Aye, one. final day of Group A, which means double sessions tomorrow and Friday. Group C in the afternoon, well, morning and afternoon, and Group B in the evening sessions. 9.30, your start time live on Sporty Stuff TV. And 10 p.m. One hundred. Darts after dark. Sounds like one of those Yvette Fielding type programs. 56. Well, Nathan Gurdon will be hoping that he'll be having Saturday night darts after dark. If he can claim victory here, and he's on the 152 again. It doesn't go on this occasion, so Lauby will return for 124 for a break, and it'll put him within a leg of victory. Treble 18. For the ball. We've seen that hit a few times today. Nathan, you require it three times in the first match of the day. And double 18 for tops. 56. Danny so Lauby will return for this 31. Two trolls. Double six. Game gets on the it. Fifth and he gets the Danny break. Lowry. That's his second break of the match. And he'll be hoping now he can get himself a hold. Because it would seal him a 4-2 victory and it would put him so he Danny to level on points with Nathan Gervin going into the final three One games of the group, hundred. heading into the final gallop of this darting marathon. Yeah, broken leg one. Did Danny Lowby was One broken hundred. straight back by Gervin, who at that point then got a grip on the game, but now Please, it's Lowby's to lose. When the first dart enters the board like that, usually you get a maximum. 140s will do in this scenario. 100. And the leg is up in the offing. But you'd say Gervin has wrestled the darts away from Lowby here. 55. But he's given it straight back. It's gift wrap from Gervin. Well, still needs to find a couple of trebles. He's done that. One to get a couple. He's found three. Three of the best at the best possible time. That puts him on the brink of a 4 2 win. To put him level on points. Forty two. Danny requires sixty. Well, at least he left to finish. 42. Miss chance, now, miss match start when he left to finish 64. by scoring 42 by working out. Surely he can't win it with this supersized out shot, and he can't. It's beyond him. Lavi will get three more for the match. 64. Danny required 20. Double 10. Go for a huge victory match. to put Danny himself Lowry. level on points with Nathan Gervin and to keep his hopes of progressing through Group A very much alive. It is a big victory for Danny Lowby by four legs to two over Nathan Gervin with an 88.2 average, one max apiece and four for nine on the doubles. A high checkout of 80. So Lowby on 18, Gervin on 18. And it looks as if we're going to have a grandstand finish at the top end of Group A. We're going to take a short break. And upon our return, we're going to head into the bottom half of the table as Jamie Kelling takes on Stefan Belmont.
Good morning. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series at the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth, where we've just seen Danny Lauby triumph in the tussle at the top of the league table. There you can see the 4-2 winner. And as Murph said, that match was probably more important for Lauby than it was for Gervin. He's averaged more, nearly 10 points more than his opponent in that one. Condemning Gervin to his first defeat in nine matches at the Super Series. It was an incredible run from the youngster. He stopped in his tracks by Danny Lauby. And we can see what that's done to the league table then. Lauby now level on points with Gervin, both on 18 points. Gervin with a far superior leg difference still, despite that 4-2 defeat. Up next then, we've got Jamie Kelling against Stefan Belmont. We've been talking a lot this morning about Jamie's finishing and how good he is, how clinical he is at the back end of games. 43% checkout success in his first match of the morning. And we can see now another clip of how clinical he is on the outer ring. He takes on Stefan Belmont, who took out the 170 in his first match. Of course, the highest checkout there is in this game. Nobody is going to better that. But this Jamie Kelling finish, the 96 from yesterday's action, just showing how clinical he is with those combination finishes. So let's get into this one then. It is Jamie Kelling up against Stefan Belmont. Let's hand over to our commentary team. Thanks, Abby. Yes, it is a meeting between two of the players who will meet again, surely, around this time tomorrow in Group C. Belmont and Kelling just in this mini-league playing out for the title of best of the rest. Both of them lost their opening matches to players in the top three. This is the first darting duel between the three cellar dwellers. Can Kelling get the better of Belmont? Or will Belmont kill off Kelling in this one, we'll find out in the company of Henry Deacon. And Henry, I believe that you're going to be part of the uh, Modus Super Series quiz team once again this evening. Very, very serious business. Now, I've been twice, and on both occasions, we finished runner-up. The one time hey, I wasn't there, Jamie they ended up winning. Well, on. What we want from the viewers is to give our quiz team a name for the night. So tweet in. Let us know some of your suggestions. It needs to be darting themed, obviously, and keep it usable, shall we say. It's there, you see, at MSS Darts on Twitter. You can get me at Chris Murphy 180. You can get Henry on at H underscore Deacon Media. And we will read out a few of the uh, best answers and pick a favourite and maybe even hand out some kind of prize. Maybe a free ticket to finals night. How about that? So am I not allowed to come up with my suggestion of Earth, Wind and Fire then? Because do you remember Whoa, that it's the 21st night of September? What was your, uh, what was your, what was it, Earth, Wind and Fire? Indeed. Well, if I was coming, it could be Murph, Wind and Fire, couldn't it? But I'm not. 55. I'm not going to spend all day with you and all evening, Henry. Sorry, pal. Was that why you didn't come out for my drive last night? One hundred. Uh, it sounded like a wise decision, to be honest. <laughs> well, Belmont in the driving seat in this one, having scored a one eighty and a one forty in successive visits. One hundred and twenty-one. So one two one for an opening leg break. Trouble seventeen. Would have given him a dart at the ball, but Kelling needs something big, needs something sizable. And this is just for a hold. Okay, you require 167. Fifty-seven. Seven, you require 64. Sixteens and eights. Big target to aim at. And now double eight. And still. Fifty-six. A chance Jamie for Kelling, and we've seen evidence of his... Clinical killing off of checkouts such as this. And he's given Kelling a sniff. Nine, two, and he two. nearly took advantage of the opportunity. Eight. Belmont returns for double four. Game shot the first. And it is a break for Belmont Seven, in leg one. Kelling had a chance. Mr. Dart a double. 
18. So Belmont takes an advantage. Averaging 93 after the first leg. And I just wonder whether he's going to be another one of those players who perhaps will be placed into Group C and maybe we're going to have to watch on Thursday and Friday Whoa, as he slowly but surely progresses and gets better as the group goes on. Yeah, it certainly has shown those small improvements day by day, maybe even game by game, Stefan Belmont. He's already hit two maximums in this one. A break of throw to the good. Looking good for Belmont, and he was Ooh, three. as close as Kelling to winning his first match with a, a decent performance against the league leader, Nathan Gervin. Yeah, it's interesting. The players get an opportunity first thing in the morning to have a bit of a practice on stage, and Stefan Belmont was pretty much on that stage practicing throughout the entirety of their allotted time, just trying to adjust himself and acclimatize himself a bit more to this stage. Hey, I wonder far. whether it's helping here in the early throws of day two. Maybe he could be the man to watch in Group C later in the week. Maybe we'll see him every day this week. Including at that finals night where, yes, tickets are free. You did hear us correctly. Dartshop.tv is the place to go to find them. 60. Devin, you require 80. Double 10. Game show for the a 2-0 lead. Step and this so far has been Pelman's best performance of the week. He's averaging a tonne. After two legs, it could be the halfway point of this game if he carries on at this rate. No ton plus throws, but two 140 pluses and two maximums. 60. He's playing at a very high level, at a very high ceiling, a ceiling we know he's got. And you think that's what they're all playing for now, isn't it? They all know they're going to be in Group C. I don't think there's any question about that anymore, but... Those three players, including the two on stage now and Alex Small, want to finish top of their mini league. One we are going to see hundred. a couple of interesting games in the top half of the table in the next few matches, in fact, because Small will take on Biowetsky, who we think probably needs to win all of his matches. Aye, have a chance, although that Lauby win over Gervin will have helped him a little. Then Lauby plays... Biowetsky after Gervin has taken on Kelling. 96. Maybe a three-way race might become two, or it could become even closer at the top. Simply put, Biowetsky needs Kelling to beat Gervin in that one if he can get the victory Six. in the next. Ninety. Do you think we will see... All three of them at finals night regardless. Lauby, Biowetsky and Gervin. I expect Gervin to be there. I'd expect Lauby to be there. Hey, two one. Jamie record 149. The only issue is that group B is going to be incredibly tough tomorrow. I expect Scott Williams to get through. So Biowetsky may be miss oh, the man to miss out. I think it'll be between him and possibly Dennant. We'll watch it unravel with Henry Deacon and a guest commentator. Next clue coming. We're going to borrow him 59. for the next Game couple of days. 104. So that goes with the earlier clue. Answers on a postcard. Something else you can tweet in all about. 72, Stephen. You record 160. Well, he's had a 170 today. The 160 will not follow suit, so Kelly's going to return for this 32. To make it 2-1, half the arrears, half the deficit. Game's and there it the goes, and 2-1 it is. Kelly. But Kelly needs a break, a telling break, as Bellman has the darts in leg four. Well, look at Stefan to throw first. A 2-1 game on. Belmont, though, still the aggressor, still the man in the box seat. 86. 
this game five of 15 that will bring you between now and around 2 p.m. this afternoon. 26. I've had a few uh, tweets in about that quiz team name, Henry, but to be honest, they've all been rubbish. I'm not even going to bother reading them out. Do better. Sixty. Murphy is a hard taskmaster to please. Yeah, I might have to come up with one myself at this rate. Help you guys out. That can be my contribution. 140. That contribution for Jamie Kelling, very good, but following an opening score of 26 in this leg, making it hard for himself. Incidentally, if you were to play hey, tonight, what would be your specious round? What would be Murphy's magical round? Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad on music. I'll be honest. I'm not too bad on that. Love a music round. Go on, give us a few bars of a song. And I, no, don't actually. I've heard you sing before. He, the, the opening line to Henry Deacon's karaoke go-to is "Hell has gone and heaven's here." Let me tell you, it's the other way round. You're just jealous, Smurf. 60. You think what you want. <laughs> Jealous of the ability of these guys, though. Those that can't talk about it, don't they? And it's those upon the stage that can do it. And we might one see Jamie hundred. Kelling do to Jamie Belmont what Belmont did yesterday, the 1 4 1. Well, it's obligatory to say there's the one. 121. Seven, you require 100. It's actually written in the wall book we've got in front of us, including he's missed the big number. But he hasn't there, Belmont. Will he go tops, tops? No, decided that he liked the lie there on the treble. I'm intrigued there. I thought he would have gone for the two doubles. Yeah, but you require Kelly returns here for double 10 for 2-2. Two, two. And remember, Belmont was 2 nil up in this game. It would be a control clinching leg Seven, you for Kelly, but he's failed to find the double. Rare that we've seen him miss three clear darts at the outer ring Game over the last three days, and Belmont Stephen makes Belmont. him pay for doing so, and he's now one away from his first win of the day. Kelling has the darts to he stay in this particular match. Darts. The winner of this one will top the bottom half of the group. Kelling, Belmont, Small, all on six points. Aye, two, one. Win for Belmont will put him on to eight. I suppose it is academic, except for the fact you can at least hold the bragging rights of being the best player in, in Group C from the hey, three-day group. Although, I think all three of those players at the bottom will be happy that come the beginning of tomorrow morning, it's going to be a 100. clean slate. And we're likely to see all of them again, even if they don't make it through to finals tonight. It's 45. now a 13-week cycle, 12 weeks in qualifying for Champions Week. An awful lot of players get used. And more opportunities available for more players. We're seeing more and more debutants, more and more international players as well. Is there anyone that you haven't seen yet that is eligible that you would like to see? 60. James Beaton, I think, is doing some good stuff on the WDF circuit. Good young player. Made the semis of the Scottish Open earlier this year. Obviously, before he made his debut, James Howell, I think, was one they were very excited to see. But, I mean, maybe even someone from Europe, like a Richard Venstra or an Andy Bartons or someone from that lowland region. Jamie, require 80. Well, here and now, Kelling... Looking at 80, it's a, a wayward one. It's left 65, which is a little bit awkward. Probably will go the bull route. That was the intention. He's made a right mess of this, to be honest. 33. Everything went wrong. Every single target he went for, he missed in that visit. One I don't just mean the trebles, I mean the, the segments. 47. The 20 is at the top. And that is what he wants, Tops. Seven was only just in, but that is perfect Jamie all Kelly. of a sudden. And that's the one that matters. Kelling clings on. But it's Belmont who has the darts here to seal that 4-2 victory. Stephen to throw first. Mind of the 
after this, we're going to see Alex Small against Sebastian Biowetsky in a mid-table battle. Biowetsky's got to win that, maintain any kind of hope. It's very unlikely he'll get through group A, but if he can win that one, then hey, hope that there's mistakes elsewhere. He can just give himself a chance. And I wonder what it's like for these two players, because they know that the top three is out of sight. Hey, T5. And of course, they want to play their way into form, but it, it, it must be difficult when you know what you're coming back for tomorrow. T5. Yeah, I think so. And it's, it's hard not to just go through the motions. But, of course... One element, particularly in the games against each other, is that they're going to be playing each other on Thursday and Friday. So they want to inflict a few more war wounds on their opponents. 140. And everyone knows everyone's results against everyone. Don't believe anyone that says that they don't. Been interesting watching Stefan Belmont so far this week. He's not a very expressive darts player, is he? He's... Pace rarely changes. You wouldn't know what he was thinking. You wouldn't know One how he was feeling just by looking at him. He wears his flag on his sleeve, but he doesn't wear his heart on his sleeve. But I think it suits him because it keeps him measured in the big moments. Interesting. That's 52. a big moment. He's decided not to leave the ball. Now, I get that when someone's on 160-something, but not when they're on 120-something. But he does come back for three darts at double 16 to win the match after another wayward 39. one by Kelling. Stepping you require 32. 216 to Belmont. Double eight. 24. And that goes inside, and so Kelling returns. And can he punish Belmont here? Chop stops. That was high. 19. Then he moves across to the 16. So Stefan Belmont wants double four to complete a 4 2 victory eight. and to put him on to eight points to be the best of the rest in Group A. Go and there it is. The match. He beats Belmont. Jamie Kelling by four legs to two. It was attritional at times, but Belmont completes the victory to be the top player in the bottom half of Group A after a couple of rounds of fixtures. 83.29 average for him, two maximums, four for nine on the doubles, a high out of 80. So he secures his first victory of the day after losing 4-3 to Gervin in his opener. We're going to take a short break. We're going to see Alex Small back on the stage again. He takes on Sebastian Biowetsky.
Good morning and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. We've just seen Stefan Belmont become the first player of the bottom half of the table to get a win this morning. A 4-2 victory. Surprisingly, Jamie with just 25% checkout success, Murph. Yeah, we, we spoke about it earlier, didn't we? If that checkout percentage that he's been having consistently declines then he's going to lose matches against the other players in the bottom three and that's exactly what's happened in that match Belmont good value for the win and we did see some good darts from Stefan but both players go in through the motions I think it's fair to say at spells in that game yeah I think that they want to beat each other because they're going to play each other again um, but it is difficult knowing that you're probably going to be in group C you're out of contention for the top three to get in group B or definitely out of contention to win the group it is a, a difficult position to be in so that their only real motivation is to get one up on that opponent ahead of a, a rematch later in the week and we can see the table now we've got two players in Alex Small who is bottom given the leg difference at the moment against Biowetsky coming up next Alex Small is someone that we highlighted at the start of the day he didn't really show that scoring power at all in his opening match do you see him being able to pose a threat in this one possibly because of the little surges we've seen yeah. from him before and I'm going to use the old cliche now of being able to play without pressure maybe that might bring out the best in him and maybe he'll be able to show that more consistently because we have seen as you said in spells he has shown that he is able to contend with anyone but it's just showing that consistently throughout a whole match yeah we've seen small hits and big scores the most 180s of anybody uh, big checkouts as well from Alex Small in fact, here's one of them. It's almost like we planned it. <laughs> a fantastic 1-4-2. Yeah, and he's obviously a very capable player. He's just won the Champion of Champions, which is a brutal fall. Yep. That won by the likes of Gerwin Price, Johnny Clayton, and another Welsh player won it as well in Alex Small. So, yeah, he's, he's a very talented player. He's just putting it together for the duration of a match. Most definitely. A Newport County fan as well, which I've always got time for. So let's get into this next match then. Chris Murphy is going to limp down to the commentary box is probably not going to be a sprint is it to join Henry Deacon thank you very much Abby so for Sebastian Biorecki he's going to have to win the lot from here to keep his hopes of progressive through group A alive up against Alex Small who will want to well he want to be the spoiler in this group as the games go on he plays Biorecki he plays Gervin in the remaining games he's got. Hey, first leg is Alex to lost out to Danny Lauby early on today. And it is the Welshman who gets us underway. 96. Newport fan. Who plays their home matches at Rodney Parade. He's hoping to rain on Sebastian's oh, Parade. Sixty. Just to check again on the scenario, Gervin Lauby locked on 18, Biorecki's on 14, so he can go within two at the end of round 12 of the pair. But what he's going to have to arrest is the legs difference bracket. He's coming 13 Big legs behind Gervin as things stand. So... Yes, he has to win, but he also has 100. to win big. And Chris Murphy has made 58. the leisurely stroll back down to the commentary box. And he's come bearing gifts as well. You're too kind, Chris. No, Can't take credit not. for it, actually. It's from the Belmont family. Some nice Swiss chocolate. So if I'm quiet for the next few minutes, that's what I'm doing. 43. Sebastian, you've got 157. Don't tell our producers and directors, will you? I was going to take them in there, Henry, but if that's the game you want to play, then... 57. That's entirely up to you. We'll make sure we have our allocation first. 80. Our well, BOX key returns for Sebastian, a ton. Sebastian, you require 100. Decided to go treble. 60. Alex so Alex Small returns to 106. So uh, hold a throw. Oh, 
for Bielewski had a big task today. Sebastian and that group B, 40. although three players from five get through, it does, does look very Game tough. On the first leg. So Sebastian winning Bielewski. as many legs as possible and as many matches as possible might be advisable for Bielewski, who still does harbour ambitions Sebastian to throw first. Of closing the gap and finishing Game top on. of the table. If he wins this match, he moves within two of Gervin and Lauby, with Lauby still to play, and with Gervin to play seven. in the very last match of the session. It's still possible, 100. even if it is improbable. You just gotta hope. You just gotta believe. Eighty-five. And as we know, one result can completely swing everything in this group. Fifty-seven. He probably needs healthy wins, doesn't he? Because hmm. if he is to catch up with Gervin, it's likely that that last match he might still be two points behind 60. and need a, a heavy win against Gervin. It could be that even a win Six. couldn't eradicate the leg difference. So it's not just about winning matches now for Sebastian Biowetsky. It's about winning them well. 100 Excellent setup play from the pole to leave the big fish. And I've got to say, for, for a young player, his counting is excellent. 40. Nearly did himself an injury there, Alex Sebastian Small. 170. That wasn't smart, Alec. 100. I must say, we're a few weeks in now to this new concept of the Super Series, and I think it's been a great so success so far. Well, Sebastian gets success here. He can just stay there. It's not a disaster that way, would one. Leaves Early. tops. You can see there that the wire gets Alec pushed by that dart. He should come back. It's not a guarantee. Well, it is now. So he's going to come back to Tots for a 2-0 lead. Like a and it has been quite comfortable for Biowetsky so far. Double 10. Game's there it is. The he could just leg. flick it off the Sebastian barrel of the Biowetsky. second dart. And that is exactly what he does. And so he opens up so a 2-0 lead. Next to no time at all. Every match matters One for Sebastian Biowetsky. Every leg matters. He was 13 behind in the leg difference before this game started. From Nathan Aye, Gerben at the top, that is. He needs to be, well, at worst, seven behind, Wednesday doesn't he, going six. into that last, that last match today so he can beat him 4-0 and overturn the difference. Sounds easy, doesn't it, when you put it like that? He's got an awfully hard task on his hands, but he's making it easier and easier. 140. Everything looks easy on paper. The reality is completely different. 140. Fifty-eight. Sixty-five. Good use of the bullseye to leave himself on a 170, a finish we've already seen today. Seventy-seven. Alex Rockwell, and it be the moment of divine inspiration which he needs really in this game. It's forty-four. It's a bit of an off one for Alex. Yeah, that is uh, a door open for Biowetsky to walk through the one, two, six. Left from the 170, oh, not the desired oh, outcome. 26. Needs a treble 19 to get a go at the ball and gets nowhere near. 58. Sebastian, you're right. 50. Likely to get further and further away in this match. 34. So Small has 68. a chance, but it's going to have to go. This 68, because you see it's Biowetsky will take out the 16 upon his return. One dart, a double Game's 16, and he takes leg. it. Alex his Moore. first dart at double, and he converts. 
brings the arrears back to 2 1, but it's Bielwetsky who has the honor the in the, the fourth. And you asked me in the last game, Murph, which player we haven't seen yet in this competition, who can play in this competition, could Ooh. play in it. So I'm going to return the favor to which, who would you like to see? Here at the Super Series at some point in time. 130. I'll give you a name that I would love to see play in this event, and I think she would do very well in it. Bo Greaves. Yes. 96. An absolute superstar of the women's game. 100. Also, maybe Eileen de Graff would be another good addition, possibly at some point as well. Yeah, come on, Eileen. Get involved. 180. We'll see plenty of them from those players if they were to make the trip. Well, the 180 from Biowetsky has put him back in the picture in this leg. A leg that... 41. Like 164. He was throwing first in. Tell you what, the tungsten tide could be turning. We were talking about the potential of a 4 0 whitewash win for the Polish player, but suddenly Small is likely to level. Small has just brought his average up to near Biowetsky's. And despite Small's struggles, Biowetsky wasn't. Whipping up trees himself. So double eight here for a break of throw and for two two. Forty eight. Sebastian, you require one hundred and twelve. Big moment this, isn't it? Big, big moment for Biowetsky. And that is very, very inviting. He's used it to great effect to leave himself double sixteen. Ninety six. Is that the one that got away? Sixteen. Two fours. Eight. I can't believe he's missed that last start. Two well thrown darts, but both along side of the wire. And so Biowetsky's back for the double eight. Four, three, one lead. With a helping hand from the double four wire. And now he needs help from the double eight. four, but he can't find it either. Double trouble here eight. with the Super Series. And now he's the other side. And now he's inside. Six. And now he's offside. Sebastian, you require eight. And Biorecki get this double four on the right side. No, that's a wide. Well, he's lucky that he's still throwing a double here because that could have easily crept into the 18. Game's and the Biorecki four, finally Sebastian gets over the line with a huge slice of fortune in that leg. A 3-1 lead for the young pole. And Alex Small will be feeling. Game on. Well, a little bit sick at the moment because he had every opportunity. 90. Remember, before that leg, he'd only had one dart double and he'd hit it. He actually hit a dart double in that leg, if you remember. It seems Ooh, like a long time three. ago, but he hit double 16 inadvertently and then proceeded to miss seven. I didn't have a beard hey, at that point in the seven. leg. Is that what you call it? I could take the parking puns, but the beard is my limit. Okay, I'll leave I'll leave you alone. A close shave. Forty six. Well it was for Biowetsky, wasn't it? Because he does need to win matches heavily. Could be key that leg come the end of the day. 95. They say it's better to be lucky than good. Helps to be both. 138. It's a mantra I can live by. Good darts there from Alex Small to leave himself on 170. Biowetsky just has to be careful here that he ensures he switches. 97. Like doesn't only switch, he does it to excellent effect. Another. And Bull. 140. Would have been the big fish from small. Wouldn't that have been the most ironic finish of the match? Following it, the last leg? This could finish the match. This could be the last leg. 93. Oh, not quite from Biowetsky. 
And here we go again. Can Small put the double trouble right? Two eights. Game no problem. Alex Small. Three two. Biewetsky has the darts to win. But it's been a real struggle for Sebastian. Six leg, it's Sebastian to throw back. Even if he went on to win the match in the decider, I think Biowetsky has to win this leg to keep tabs in the group. Because he's Ooh, got to bridge a huge gap. The Gervin on legs difference. 64. This is as thin a line as he could cut. 4-2 in this. Fifty-five. Well, following 55. this match, we're going to see Nathan Gervin look to put some more daylight between himself and Danny Lauby when he takes on Jamie Kelling. But after that, game eight, um, a massive one between Lauby and Biowetsky. Well, Gervin be inclined to want Biowetsky to win 100. that one, do you think? I think Nathan Gervin is a type of player that probably won't care what anybody else does. I, I do see the thinking there, but when you're the leader, you're the one to catch. All you've got to worry about oh, is your own I results. You don't have to think about anything else. And the healthy leg difference he's built up means that you know whoever it is that might hey, have a chance four. of catching him is going to have to not only win, but get rid of that gap as well, which is going to be very difficult. He's only 58. increased his leg difference, though, by three today so far. Or he's decreased his leg difference, I should say. With that defeat to Danny Lauby, having only increased it by one in the first match. So, it is, you know, it is possible. Stranger things have happened. A 150 on offer. Now, these are the times. I don't think he'll do it, Alex Small, on debut. But these are the times when... Why not go for the ball, ball, ball? You know you're out of contention in the group. 134. Sebastian, you're Entertainers. I, I assure you, Biowetsky won't go straight for the ball here. It's tops of the win. Game and it is victory match. once again Sebastian for Sebastian Biowetsky. Biowetsky. He came into the day thinking he would probably need to win all five of his matches if he was going to threaten top spot. Well, he's won his first two. And that one was littered with missed doubles but Biowetsky gets over the line with a 4-2 success cutting small down to size and it's two out of two for the Polish player coming next it is Nathan Gervin the league leader he takes on Jamie Kelling
Hello, welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we have just seen Sebastian Biawetsky record his second victory of the morning, a 4-2 win over Alec Small. He rode his luck at times in that one, a spot of double trouble in the middle of the match, but he wasn't punished significantly enough, as you can see there on the screen. 25% checkout success for Biawetsky, 12 missed starts at double in that one. As Chris alluded to in comms though, Sebastian getting that win was important, but if he is to challenge the two players at the top of the table, leg difference is all also going to play a part as we can see on the table there it's still Nathan Gervin at the top of the table with a significant advantage in that column Gervin and Lauby both joined on 18 points of course and next up we have Jamie Kelling against Nathan Gervin it'll be interesting to see actually how Nathan responds in this one because he was defeated for the first time in nine games in his last match that of course by Danny Lauby these two players have the best finishing stats in this group so far Kelling with the 25% on the checkout success in his last match a significant drop off in that one how will he respond to that in this match it'll be interesting to find out in the company of chris and henry thank you very much indeed abby it's all about response for jamie kelling it's all about topping the group for nathan gervin who himself is going to react from that 4-2 defeat to danny lau be a bit disappointing in that one compared to the high standards that we've set of him this week here at the super series but if you can get on to 20 points he'd have a foot and a toe i'd say in the final on saturday night okay first leg it's nathan to throw first game on hasn't been the confident convincing Gervin that I've expected to see so far today got over the line against Stefan Belmont in a brilliant opening match where both players were at a good standard. Gervin edged that one only just 4-3 and then lost out to Lauby in match two. One this hundred. is a real opportunity for him to just stamp his authority on the group again. Particularly when we've seen that Jamie Kelling hasn't been at that, that level of finishing that he has been for the previous two days. That's really been saving his skin at times. 60. Well, you wonder how Gervin will respond to the setback of losing to Lauby when he kicks off with back-to-back -back 140s. Can also confirm that the, uh, the Swiss chocolate is very, very nice indeed. And the Belmont chocolate balls have made their way to the production gallery. Even got the Swiss flag on. I don't know whether we can get them on comms box cam at some Nine, point. But... Two, one. No, don't get the comms box cam on while I'm actually tucking into the treats. 59. Nathan, you require 32. Just make sure they don't go upstairs to management. Well, can he manage to find a way through there? Sixty, just above, but he's going to come back. We're getting back on one eight two. It's been a slow start for J.K. Sixty, Nathan, you require so double 16. eight for the opening leg. We have a minimum of fuss. No score. Well, having Nathan already hit double eight, to leave it, he can't find it with three missiles. And one in treble 18 would have left the ball for Kelly. 90. Nathan, you require 16. So back we go. Now along for double four. Eight. And well, well, well. Jamie requires Nathan Gervin's missed nine darts of double in this leg. And can Jamie Kelly snatch this from underneath his nose? James, on the Frisk first him leg. on the way out because Jamie he's stolen Kelly. that leg. Well, it is Nathan Gervin on so the way out of Jamie top spot. To throw first. Who would have thought that at the start of the day? We knew that there would be a race, but most of us, well, all of us, everyone that I spoke to, expected him to win it. Suddenly, 
it's under threat. Because if he goes on to lose this match, Danny Lauby 80. could leapfrog him with victory in his next. And his next is against Sebastian Biowetsky, who, if he were to win that, 60. After a Gervin defeat here, we'd have a three way tie at the top of the table. And suddenly you're going to have to dust oh, off that abacus. Great. I've got a smartphone now, Henry. Keep up. 96. But again, that, that leg difference could come into play, couldn't it? Although he's losing 58 legs today so far, having won 4 3 and lost 4 2. Is Jamie Kelly going to play a big part? In who tops this table? The way he's throwing at the eight. moment would suggest the answer to that question is a big yes. Remember, Nathan Gervin came out of the traps absolutely firing. Six. Missed those darts at double, and the game has just completely changed. Is, is he still using the Andy Jenkins darts? They look a little bit different to me. 32. Have a look at these when they come back up, and I'm going to maybe have a look at some video from yesterday that's a re-grip there as well it might be yeah i think it might be he may have just changed his one stems and flights yeah, i think it's a slightly Page shorter stem jamie kelly and he may have a slightly shorter fuse at the top of the table because jamie kelly's opened up a 2-0 lead two from four on the doubles so it's Nathan to throw first. And Lauby and Biowetsky will be watching this intently in the practice room, knowing that they are next to the hockey. 22. Well, is he feeling it a little bit? Nathan Gervin, is he feeling the pressure of being the hunted? And Jamie Kelly free rolling. Free flowing. We have not seen this low level from Nathan Gervin for the duration of a match. We did see in his previous match a slow start, and then he put it right. Despite going on to lose, he got better as the game went on. But this would be a very disappointing display for Gervin. And it would be a display that would actually take it out of his hands, having... Been in his hands for the entire week. 60. Needs a couple of trebles. 58. Doesn't get anything. And Kelly's got six starts of 3 0. Who saw this coming? He didn't after the midway point of leg 65. one. That's for certain. Well, the match yesterday was 4-2 to Gervin. 57. Jamie required 96. The match the day before was 4-0 to Nathan Gervin. He may need the 1-2-4. 56. Nathan required 124. To stop Kellen getting three ahead here with a double break of throw. Treble 18. And he's not going to get a dart at the ball. He has had... 63. Jamie Nine darts of double in this match as he struggled in that opening leg. James but Jamie McCurley. Kelling has Jamie hit three. Kelly. And that was a perfect guy for the first dart to find its way in with the well, second. And Jamie Kelling has the throw here for a 4 0 win. This has serious repercussions. It would put him back. On to, my, on to plus 14. Hey, two, one. If Lauby could win 4-0 against Biowetsky, he would not just be above Gervin in terms Three, of points. He would also be on plus 13. This is changing in a heartbeat. 40. Didn't see a scenario, if I'm honest, totally honest. Didn't see a scenario where Gervin would be beaten on points in this group. 93. Didn't see him losing a couple of games on the spin. 
But Jamie Kelling has well, say he turned on the style. He's he's kept that that finishing that he's become known for this week. And indeed in previous outings at the Super Series. But he's not playing at a much higher level than he normally does. He's a, just about a mean performance from him. I it's met Gervin that's dropped his level, isn't it? Yeah, I mentioned yesterday that you know what you're gonna get from Jamie Kelling. And if you play below that level, you probably get B. If you play above it, you're probably oh, gonna win. But you know what Jamie to get, Robert what to expect 36. from Kelling. Well, Gervin's gonna have to take the one two way out now. There's absolutely no doubt about it. It's an even, tri even trickier finish than the one two four that he had in the previous leg. If he finds a treble 18, he'll have to find another. He has found another for double 10. And that is as close as he came to a Scottish skin saver. 78. And Kelling can finish off the killing. Tops. 38. The match dart comes and goes. And so for the first 20. time since leg one, Gervin's going to get an opportunity again at the doubles. Double five. This has to go. Game Simple as that. Play. And Gervin's up to the Nathan task. Gervin. Brings it back to 3-1. Gives himself a glimmer of hope. And it was a break as well. Like it's Nathan to throw first. Gervin throwing Game first off. to close the gap to a single leg. And suddenly, Jamie Kelling will have something to think about. 134. And of course, for Kenning, 60. six points in the group. He hasn't had much experience of closing games out. He's got three wins from 12. Kevin's record's the opposite nine wins and three defeats. So you sense if Kenning's going to get it done, he wants to get it done as soon as possible. If it gets tight, then. You say Gervin's now of winning matches in this group may come into play. Gervin's won some four threes, which he shouldn't have won oh, as well in this group. Won. For all the brilliance, he's timed some of his runs to perfection. That was an important last start. The treble 17 to just keep him in the box seat. Although Kelling has something to say about that with his response. A brace of ton 40s after opening the leg for the treble this turn. Gives him the chance. The chance has gone. Gervin should get. At least one dart. 65. At the outer ring 82. here. Bullseye for starters. It's 17 for tops. Every double now huge. Kelling waiting. 60. And he will get another opportunity. Jamie Buckwine, 96. 96 for the match. Trevor 19. For the double. Go for the win shot on the match. and to really open Jamie things up Kelling. at the top of Group A, Jamie Kelling has made things very, very interesting indeed. It's defeat for Nathan Gervin by four legs to one, which gives Danny Lowby the opportunity next up against Sebastian Biowetsky to go top of the group. Biowetsky wins it. We have a three-way tie at the top. Kelling beat Gervin, courtesy of an average just a shade under 86. No maximums in the match, but a 50% checkout ratio was what won it for JK in the end with a high out of 96. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, it's a battle of second and third, which has been made a whole host bigger now as Lauby takes on Biowetsky.
Good morning and welcome back to the final day of action in Group A. We were wondering how Nathan Girvan would respond to his defeat to Danny Lauby earlier this morning. And well, he missed nine darts at a double in the opening leg of the match and just couldn't seem to get going in that one. Credit to Jamie Kellen, who focused on the job in hand, was more consistent in the scoring phase and went about his business just fine. 50% checkout success there, as you can see on the screen. That result really does change the complexion at the top of the league standings, as we can see at the table now, at the top of the table, Danny Lauby is up next. He takes on Sebastian Biawetsky. A huge game in the top of the table. Lauby could go two points clear at the top if he is to get that win in the next match. So a really, really crucial tie coming up next. Biawetsky will have to be more clinical on the outer ring in this one because he missed 12 darts at double against Alex Small in his last match. And there is no doubt about it, Danny Lauby will not let him off the hook as the Welshman did. So to get into this one, then a really big match at the top of the table. Let's hand over to our commentary team of Henry and Chris. Thanks, Abby. Yes, it is a top of the table. Tungsten Tussle. A real darting duel between Danny Lauby and Sebastian Biowetsky, whose hopes have been helped by the apparent demise this morning of Nathan Gervin, who we thought had had his scare when Stefan Belmont pumped in the 170 against him and missed the opportunity to beat him before bedding the ball for the second time in the match for Gervin to get over the line 4-3, but since then he's gone down 4-2, 2 Lauby, and 4-1 oh, like in throw the short first. result of Group Game A off. so far in the previous match against Jamie Kelly, and that has opened up the opportunity for either Lauby to top the table by two points, or for Biowetsky to make it a three-way tie at the peak of the pile. Well, 100. well, well. Did we expect this at the start of the day, I wonder? 100. And for Nathan Gervin, I think he would... I don't know what would be a good result for him, because now we'll go above him with a victory, but if Biowetsky brings so it on to 18, then he's got two players living on the same points as him. And from well, a position where it looked as... Oh, my, the, the darts Eight. come out again. He's had a, he had a couple of them yesterday, Danny Lauby, didn't he, where... The aim of the second dart was so good that it was knocked out because he was practically in the same spot as the first. And didn't he look angry about it? He looks good 140. kill. Still in a convincing position in this opening leg. 83. But a little wince there as that third dart found the, the neighbouring treble that scores 57 points fewer. Than the one he was hoping for. 121, Danny Rickwine, 98. Oh, that was uh, Sebastian a bit risky 70. with the second dart going for tops, but he does leave double 20. As does his opponent, and that's right out of the way. 50. Big chance for Biawetsky goes Rickwine begging 40. in the very opening leg. He just drags it low. Now he wants double Enjoy 10, gets double set. 10. Danny Lauby. And Danny Lauby su survives a scare from Seb. Leads by a leg to nil. Second Both players unbeaten so far first. today. Biowetsky winning 4-3 against Kelling, 4-2 against Small. Lauby thrashing Small 4-1. One. One and defeating the table top of Nathan Gervin in the first twist in today's tail. 140. Story of the day is really beginning to develop here. What can Biowetsky develop on the back of an opening max? Well, he's missed a dart to Aye, break in the opening leg. He's put in a good half dozen darts on throw, but will need to find that break at some point. The question is, how many opportunities will he get? And will he be punished? For missing doubles throughout this match. 
140. Oh, so, so far, this is a complete contrast to that game of Alex Small a couple of matches ago. Hey, Knows that he had to up his Bradley game Maguire, and boy has he upped it. 96 for an 11 data. 76 for a 12 data. Well, he will expect to be back. And he will be back with three. And he can't afford to miss. 45. Sebastian, you require 40. The Lauby's left 99. Games but that's academic match. because Bioetsky levels up. Bioetsky. Good quality contest this so far. Bioetsky averaging over a ton at this early stage. Now B93 and a half. Now there's a 14 data to hold for Seb. It's a big, big game this oh, for Danny Lauby because after it he would have played both Gervin and Biowetsky. In his first three matches of the morning. And if he can have beaten them both to move to the top of the table, he's a big favourite. To make it a clean sweep and go on and take top spot. Well, if he can get victory against Bioetsky, he's done the hard work for himself by beating the two players that were his rivals Six. for top position. And then it's doing the business against those in the bottom half of the table in games 14 and 15. It's one win apiece Aye, for the pair of them so far this Danny week. Biowetsky actually beaten 4-1 on Monday. It was a 4-3 win for Lauby yesterday. 80. On again, a dart not sticking for Lauby. do wonder if he needs to whether it's a throw issue or whether he needs to sharpen up his points because it happens quite a lot for him. On that occasion, it might have just been the wire that stopped the dart oh, entering the board, but it is a, a recurring problem and it may cost him. And that may cost him. But as he rescued the 70. shot, almost did. Sebastian, you require Another 100. break chance now for Biowetsky. Tani wants. He'll stay there. He's looking for a dart at double 10. 60. Danny required Goes 20. high, but may find himself behind again. Game As Lauby the beds the double 10 and Danny the lie, the second dart was so kind for a left-handed player. And he's halfway towards victory, halfway towards topping the group Sebastian and deposing first. Nathan Gervin at the summit. Yeah, and what was impressive there from Lauby is... He did move across to the left a little bit. He wasn't lured in by the dart being on the wire. He knew that he could open up the angle even more and use that dart. And for a player who throws as quickly as he does, it must be tempting just to chuck another at it. But he made sure he gave himself the best chance to hit it and hit it, he did. Showed a bit of maturity there, did Danny? 59. He's a thing, he's 29. 55. He's averaging 10 points less than Biowetsky in this match. Did have a dart to break in the opening leg, Biowetsky, and had 100 50. to break in the third, but didn't get a dart at double on that occasion. They're both checking out at 33%, but Lauby's had more opportunities, so he's had two legs on throw. Is this the leg where he threatens a throw of his opponent? One hundred. Possibly. How Lowby would crave a two-trouble visit here. Not in that bed. But remember in yesterday's oh, game, both players hit a 1-5-2. So these big finishes have been going for the pair. Well, it won't be going for Biowetsky. Will the biggest finish of the lot be going for Danny Lowby? We've already seen it once Danny today in the first match of the day from Belmont. Can Lauby land the big one? Well, he does get the big one. You're 41. correct. <laughs> Sebastian, you require 44. 44, then, for parity, for deadlock. And we'll still be none the wiser. I think he was aiming for the treble. But it is double 16. 
12. And he fails to find an outside opportunity for Lauby on one of these tricky finishers. Now for the 19s first, treble 20 for the bullseye. Going for three one. The full flag. And yesterday's battle between these two was decided by big finishes, big outs at big times. And maybe this one will do so as well. The 1-2-9 at the play. perfect time for Danny Lauby. The bullseye gives him a 3-1 lead. It gives him the throw for the match. And he might be on the march. Got a couple of chances, really, for Biowetsky to, to break through, particularly that dart he had in the first leg. But when Lauby's right, chance came, he not. took it. And he took it in style. Ninety-nine. So that could be the dart that effectively wins Danny Lauby the group at the end of the day. A brilliant bolt could not have been better timed. Ninety-three. And if Lauby closes this out, he will go two points clear of Nathan Gervin at the top of the table, who's been an immovable object at the summit of Group A for a good couple of days. And he will move four points clear of Sebastian Biowetsky. His hopes will fade into a mere darting dream. And Biowetsky is on the ropes, not just in this game, but in the group. Because Lauby will return for 65 for a 4-1 win. Should put him on to 20 points. And you would sense end his hopes of winning the group. Double 16 30 for the match. So Biowetsky will have one more chance. What's he got? What has he got? Well, he hasn't got a treble, which means he won't get a dart at double. And Danny Lauby, who turned the tie with that brilliant bull for the 1 2 9 combo. Has won the tie the and has moved Danny to Lowry. the top of the table. Nathan Gervin no longer occupies P1 in Group A. Despite the higher average from Biowetsky, it was Lauby's timing and that 1 2 9 checkout that changed everything for a 4 1 win. And now Lauby leads, and Lauby is in pole position to take that place at finals night. He'll be back in a couple of games' time to increase his lead even further when he faces Jamie Kelling. Before that, it's Stefan Belmont against Alex Small. Stay with us.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series where we have a new league leader, Danny Lauby, following his 4-1 victory over Sebastian Biowetsky. There you can see the stats on the screen. A huge 1-2-9 on the ball from Lauby to go 3-1 up in that contest was a really significant moment. The American just taking his opportunities at the right time. As for his opponent, well, he was unable to do the same. Just one out of five on the outer ring from the 18-year-old pole. And as I mentioned, that does now move Danny Lauby to the top of the table. He's won all three of his matches so far today, including two incredibly important ones against Gervin and their Biowetsky with that 4-1 victory over him. So he's the first player on to 20 points. And as you can see, we've been talking about Gervin and his superior leg difference. He's on plus 15, but Danny Lauby, after to that 4-1 victory now plus 12 so we now move on to a battle between Stefan Belmont and Alex Small Alex Small showed glimpses in that last match that he played but just unable to capitalize on the errors from Biowetsky in that one let's see how this one pans out in the company of Chris and Henry thank you very much Abby well these two know exactly where they're going to be tomorrow but they all Want to build some confidence ahead of their campaigns in Group C on Thursday and Friday morning. Stefan Bellman, the 33-year-old from Cham in Switzerland. Winner of a Challenge Tour event in 2022. And here's Alex Small, the reigning champion of champions. 24 from Wattsville. Still about a nickname, so he's going to have to work on that if he's going to win more big titles as the years go on. I suppose it's similar to a couple of games we, we've had today involving Belmont and Small. It's about building as much confidence as you can. And it, no, it's like tough it's to play in circles like where you know that nothing's in at stake in terms of finishing third or finishing top. But you don't want your group to fizzle out and wane in confidence going into tomorrow and Friday. 58. Yeah, Belmont has thrown some decent stuff today. A glorious defeat against Gervin, if you like, in his opening match. Six. And that good win against Jamie Kelling. But Abby was right when she said that we've just seen flashes from Alec so far. And we're still waiting to see more than small glimpses 45. of what he can do. Will this be the match where he puts it all together? Aye, do you want? I guess one of, the, one of the things that we, we've spoken about with Alex Small is that the spells, the sustained spells of arrowing excellence have been short-lived. And he's fresh from winning the Champion of Champions where they only have to be short-lived because it's first to two in that tournament. So maybe that oh, format 84. suited him even better than a relatively short format here. This must seem like a marathon after that sprint. Yeah, but you, you get the sense if he can 60. get it together over this best of seven format on Thursday and Friday, he's going to be a very live contender in Group C. But 60. I just wonder whether the fact that he throws so quick, and it's the same thing that we've leveled out at, at Ricky Evans over the years, that he can throw too quick, and because of it, he cannot find consistency at times. I think a lot of fast players are first dark oh, merchants. G8. All about where the first one goes, and the other two will... It'd be very difficult to switch 60. to the target, make the necessary adjustment, a case in point there from small. But I do think for the fast throws, if that's how they play, you don't want to lose what's good about it as well. And that's a difficulty, isn't it, in modifying the way you throw. 60. I like rock 146. Well, he needs the first start to be perfect here. Another one of them leaves him one dart at double 16 for the 146. Stefan, you require 40. Well, steady Stefan. Looking to inflict the first blow on double 10. Well, he's lucky it didn't go in double 15. 20. He's unlucky that didn't go in double 10. And so Small will come back and for the 32 for 32. a break of throw. Game shot there we first. go. And Alex he breaks Small. Belmont with... An ironic celebration 
apologises to his opponent. Don't apologise for winning Seven legs. Alex to throw first. That's your job, man. So on the list of things to tweet in about at MSS Darts on social media, we've now got the Alex Small nickname, but that's no biggie. The quiz team name for our Super Series quiz, that's the uh, most important one for tonight. Do get your answers in. 140. Darts themed and clean, please, so they can be read out on air. I think I might dress up into one of my nice shirts tonight what? for the pub quiz. It's a big occasion, and that's a big score for Belmont. You've been to the shops before tonight, are you? 77. Need to change out of this clobber, that's for sure. Well, it is clobbering time, as Paul Nicholson would say. For Stefan Bel Belmont here. Followed the 23 Aye, with that want. maximum. Forty three. Just seen Alex Small miss out on a one four six checkout before coming back to win the opening leg. Well he can have another go. And I mentioned that first start thing, he hit the first start in the treble nineteen 50. and followed. I like record hundred and forty thinking from Belmont there, but are we gonna see him correct it? Dart Charvu. 114. Well, it was Seven because he missed. Yeah, it's repeat rather than rectify. And Belmont has the chance to pick his pocket. Treble 19. 99. Well, this would almost be a complete mirror image of that previous leg. Missed double 16 for the 146. Game show and then the hit second it. Leg. To get Alex over the Small. line in the leg and to lead 2 0. We should say you are watching live pictures. You're not watching a replay feed of the opening leg. Throw first. It's like Groundhog Day at the Super Series. Well, it probably will be for this pair because they are bound to meet each other One on Thursday and Friday. Belmont and Alex Small playing for the third time. 123. Already this week, a 4-2 win for Belmont yesterday. Aye, 2-1. 2-1. And Small got the better of him, 4-3 on Monday. 38. Forty-one. Reminder that after this, we will resume the battle for top spot as Danny Lowby takes on Jamie oh, Kelling. Fresh off a 4-1 win against Nathan Gervin, which did Lowby a lot of favours. Gervin will be hoping that Kelling can continue to be the spoiler in this group. 59. Then we'll see Bielewski in action against Belmont. 43. Oh, that's a good one. We've had a good one in for the darts quiz team. I will, uh, I'll save it a little bit. Tease the production gallery there. 60. Hey, T3. Devin, you require 160. It's all in the spelling for the next one that I'm going to reveal, but let's see if Stefan is smelling a big finish. 60. Hey, well, that was a real five. snatch, wasn't it? Stefan, you require 100. Alex Small, and it might help Stefan snatch a leg. He's only... Looking for a hold here. I think he'll stay there. He won't go top stops. He's not done that all week. 
60. He goes the, the traditional way of finishing, one, doesn't he, Stefan Belmont? Doesn't go the modern way for things. Tops. There's only one way Small could have gone for this, realistically. Hey, and he gets it. He opens up a 3-0 like lead, double breaker throw. But he knows that he's got more levels. He's frustrated with the performance. He won't be frustrated with the scoreline, though. Alex to he's one that. leg away from Game sealing on. a 4-0 win, and he has the darts for it. What do you think of this one, Henry? Tweeted in by Dave. Mensa Suljevic. I like that. He's to own a bar as well, so it makes sense. Although, uh, I'm going to be honest. I don't think anyone in this quiz team is anywhere Eight, near Mensa. Six. You speak for yourself. 60. You actually had to put a, uh, a raffle together and try and put together as many pennies as possible to find an IQ, but... Uh, 96. This is a strange old day of darts, Nine particularly for those players five. at the bottom three, because we've seen brilliant stuff from Belmont so far today, but he's hardly turned up for this meeting with Small. And we've been waiting for Alex Small to put a performance together. He hasn't really been electrifying Nine in this game, two. but he's done more than enough for a convincing victory, and it's looking like it's going to be the most convincing victory possible. As comprehensive as they come, a 4-0 win. 57. And you, you could tell throughout the match, Alex Small has not been happy with the performance. He knows he's got more to give. We know that both players have got much more to give than this. But it is difficult in these circumstances. But can Small finish in style? He can't. So Belmont will return for 97, which Small took out in the last leg. 134. Stephen, you've got 97. Well, he wants a target he's just seen. Small hit twice. He can't find it. Treble 18. And he can't find that either. And he may find himself on the 57. wrong end. 57. Of a you require 36. whitewash defeat. Double nine. 27. Stephen and Belmont returns to tops. And that is one of the problems at play at pace. Play. As Belmont Stephen pins the tops. Belmont. It's when you have to switch around the board, isn't it? Because he was nowhere near that double nine. Like well, you're switching from it. one end of the board completely to the other. The only other equivalent I can think of is going from tops down to double three. The only place where you see such a wider split on the dartboard. 14s to 7s can also be tricky. Yeah, 10s to 5s. Mm -hmm. 64. But done so much more often. Huge feature of the Premier In League, isn't it? That switch from tens oh, to fives. We don't talk about the Premier In League. First rule of the Premier In League. Ninety-six. Bellman's just found something here. One. He may have found something inspired. He's going to have as much time as he wants 83. here. 83. Stephen, you require 85. 15s or 19s. He is a, a traditional tosser. He goes Both. those conventional routes. Fifty. Seven, you require 55. Tops. Game shot on the fifth Hold a throw in for 3-2. And possibly things may be getting interesting in this game, although Alex Moore has the darts for the match. Stefan Belmont's Alex put on a bit of a spurt. Game on. And maybe the Swiss is getting a roll a little bit here. 
And Small only kicks off 58. And Stefan. 140. Is beginning to see the treble become a bit more of a magnet. 43. Fifty-eight. Forty-four. Should start downstairs here on 303. Should have started downstairs. He worked out that going back 98. down there gave him an opportunity to leave a finish, but he did a second treble. 134. Stefan's brought his average 60. up by a good eight points here. Now just under 83. Oh my. 140. Look at the speed of that. At the speed of light. Like a comet racing through the Super Series. And despite Belmont's comeback attempts, Alex Small has 82 for the match. 13 for the bullseye, and it is covered up. Going oh, what a dance to win the match. Alex Small. For Alex Small, he beat Stefan Bellman by four legs to two. It's a spirited comeback from the Swiss Dartist. But it's Alex Small who gets over the line to seal victory in that one by four legs to two with a high checkout of 97. And so Alex Small claims the two points, beating Belmont. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we're going to see the man at the top of the table. That's Danny Lalby. He's taking on Jamie Kelling.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series and the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth where we've just seen Alex Small record his first victory of the day. 4-2 win over Stefan Belmont, an average just shy of 80 from the Welshman. 4 out of 11 on the doubles. The Welshman still not overly pleased with his performance in that one, but he did enough against Belmont who only raised his level when 3-0 down. Small getting over the line there with with a bull finish to win the match. So let's have a look at what that does to the league standings. Of course, both of those players in the bottom half of the table. There you can see all three now from four to six are on eight points. But this next match, it is a big one. Jamie Kelling, of course, fresh off the back of getting that victory over Nathan Gervin in his last match. Can he repeat that against the current league leader in Danny Lauber? Danny Lauby showing the most consistent levels of the day so far. Can he consolidate his place at the top of the table? Let's find out then. Back over to our commentary team. Thanks, Abby. Yes, will the killing, giant killing continue? Danny Lauby, the next victim on the radar of the man from Andover, having already put to the sword the previous league leader, Nathan Gervin, his reward in his next match is to take on the league leader, Danny Lauby, who leapfrogged Gervin after that 4-1 win against Sebastian Biewetski a couple of games ago. Could he be at it again, Henry? Well, Kelling's exploits today have been quite good, as you mentioned, beating Nathan Gervin quite convincingly hey, first, like it's in that to game as well. well. Game on. And Kelling you think will be the kingmaker in this particular group. 100. Did you hear for Lauby would put him on to 22 points, which 100. is usually a safe sanctuary in Group A, but maybe not so this week. 45. Lauby has a lead by two points ahead of Gervin who plays in the next match against Alex Small, Ooh, buoyed detail. by that beating of Belmont. And then Biowetsky, probably out of that race for top One sport now, hundred. although not mathematically condemned, takes on Stefan Belmont before the final three matches 58. of this group. Abby now knows that if he keeps up the winning streak, then it will be his spot of finals night on Saturday. And on paper, and we've talked about how easy things look on paper already, but on paper, the two games that he should win. They should, but whether he will is a different thing. And of course, the pressure of being top will now come into play for Danny Lowby. He's been the chaser throughout the process. He's now the one being chased, and that changes the whole psychology of things. And Kelling suddenly emitting confidence. Jamie required 40. Topsy wants. Tenzi wants. And he doesn't get 20. what he wants. And Lauby now will have a look at 104 to break in the opening leg. Going to head along the 16s route. One dart at top, and that is superb set. from Danny Lauby. Danny Lauby. He's finishing in and around that range today. He's been absolutely excellent. You'll remember the 129 he got in that 4 1 win against Biowecki that completely Game changed on. the complexion of the match. And he gets a break in the opener, courtesy of that 104. And that just stemmed the tie because Jamie Kenning got off to a good start. Eighty-three. One hundred. I feel like today has been the day where Lauby's thrown the most freely. Yeah, 60. absolutely. I do think we have seen all of the players actually settle more and more. We, we speak about debutants 
in this event, but they're all debutants on this stage, aren't they? Each week, we will see a few players returning towards the end of the the, the first phase. But ninety-seven. We have seen performances pick up from. I actually half expected Monday night to be the best session, just because it was an evening session. But it looks like it will be the poorest of the three in this group. Which means that players are going to enter on Thursday and Friday. We've got some act to 60. follow. Yeah, just take some time to settle into new surroundings. Can't buy experience. 60. For those who adapt the fastest, maybe the ones that end up reaping the rewards come 60. the end of the week. £5,000 on offer, remember, for the winner of the weekly title and the uh, place at the coveted Champions Week where £20,000 will be dished out for the first ever Moda Super Series champion. Well, Lauby's left 107, having completed a 104 combo in leg one. 84. Danny require 107. And you may need it to hold. It's a slightly less suited checkout. 87. Because he had to go all over the board, Jamie whereas a couple of darts in the same segment on the 104, the 16 route that he employed. But it's tops the target for Kelling. That looks very inviting, doesn't 17. it? 17. But he couldn't and manage he to find 20. it, and he could find himself two behind. Game he does find himself two behind. Danny courtesy of a 22 dart holder throw from Danny Lowby. A bit of a twitchy leg, Jamie that one. But Lauby won't care because he's halfway towards the finishing post. Halfway towards a victory that would put him onto 22 points oh, and it would won. force the issue significantly of Nathan Gervin. And if Lauby was to Nine, get on to 22 points, Bioretsky would be eliminated from the process 100. of winning Group A. I know we've seen a 170 today, but for me, that 129 that Lauby hit Six. against Bierwekski is the shot of the day. Shot of the three days, in fact. He won the match 4-1, but that was the one that turned the tables. If Lauby wins this group, it's thanks in a large part to that 129. There's, there's absolutely no doubt about it. And one Lauby's had to do the hard work. He's had to do the hard yards because he beat. Nathan Gervin 4-2 in the game before that. And that was what gave him the opening in the first place. Also worth remembering that that 1-2-9 checkout came after a score of 41. So he really rescued himself out of a hole. He'd already taken Aye, out the 104. It was treble Danny 16, Rebaud, single 16, and double top. Well, now it might be a change of tack. Treble 20 for double 14. Could not repeat the feat. Kelling's on a big one. Still makeable. Not now. So Lauby returns to 48 for the double break. And a 3 0 lead. All about the 16s. 2 8s. And the first dart was awkward. It was a blocker to the double 8. And then he had to move across the double 4. And it was a quick throw. That was not a nice transition. Is there a, a little twist here? Already seen him miss a couple at tops. I mean, that's almost the same dart Jamie's that he had earlier. This left. time, though, Jamie Kelling. Kelling manages to use it and keeps this game going, keeps this game, or gets this game close because it hadn't been close in the first well, couple of legs. Danny to throw first. Well, Abby is not producing a performance to really guarantee oh, victory through. here. Kelling is under par, but so is Danny Lauby. He's just doing enough, isn't he? Nothing more than that. Kellen gets back to that level Aye, that we're so used to want... seeing him play, that sort of low to mid 80s average, then this won't be enough from Lauby. And he might oh, need another four. big moment like that 1 2 9. And suddenly the gift is given to Gervin. The question is there for him to see if he can then Nine, beat six. Small to reclaim top spot. Forty. Well, that's another Chevel 20 bounce out. 
for Danny Lalby. And may present an opportunity for Kenning if he could have got all three in the bed, but he won't. So Lalby's going to have six on two, three, four. So he'll put up a three on these here and to put himself one away from 22 points. A relatively good Ooh. position in the group. It forces Nathan Gervin to pretty much win the lot from there. One hundred and one. One hundred and opportunity for that break of throw. Treble twenty for starters. May go treble eighteen. Does for double twelve. Eighty-six. Well, Lowby has a choice to make here himself. Does he go aggressive and go for treble eighteen himself? He has, and he gets two at tops. That becomes one at double ten. Finds neither. And Jamie suddenly, suddenly, Kelling has a chance to clinch control. Double three. Just goes inside, no and that's a let off for Lowby. And now he's got to take full advantage of it at Jamie double ten. He does. Way. And he is a leg away. And Jamie Kelling had the opportunity to make it to a piece. He wasn't up to the task. And so Lowby is a leg away. Fifth leg, it's Jamie to had throw Jamie first. Kelling been finishing at the same success that he had for most of the week, this would be probably a reverse scoreline. One out of ten on the doubles in this match for the Andover Ace. 123. 60. You can get a bit of luck. You still have to make the most of it. And Lauby's managed to do that throughout this game and is on course for a clean sweep of victories here at the Super Series on day three. Having got the better of his two table-topping rivals already today in Gervin and Biowetsky, he just has Belmont left to play. 100. Nice of going about his business here in leg five, Kelling. One hundred. He's going to get six and one seven eight to bring the deficit down to one. And force Lowby to serve it out. One hundred and forty. A good visit. Wonder having come inside on the, the double three where we might consider 38. splitting this. But he's going straight for it. Can't come inside with the second dart. Game but he finds it with play. the third. Jamie Kelling. Well played, Jamie Kelling. Just proving to be a thorn in the side of the leading pack in Danny this group. To throw first. Can't shake him off, can you? But Danny Lowby has the darts. Put himself on 22 points. If he does that. Nathan Gervin would have Nine, to win his up. two remaining games and then hope there's a slip up from Lalby. 140. He is rooting for JK and then some in this one. 100. Well, nothing between them after a couple of visits. And what Lauby hopes is the last leg of this game. Kelling has other ideas. Plenty of ideas. One Maximum ideas. One hundred. Jamie Rock, one hundred and twenty-four. One, two, four. To level this match and force a decider in which he would have the darts. Doesn't get a go, 56. but he does leave himself on the brink if Lauby can't complete this combo. And he can't. It's gone. Well, a, a kind of frustrated thumbs up at himself. He's really 70. lost Game it with himself a little 68. here, Danny Lauby. He's a scowl on his face. He's something to behold. Tops. And so Lowby will return for tops to make it 22 points in the group. Game and to put him the on the Danny brink. Danny Lowby.
beats Jamie Kelling by four legs to two with an average of 81 and a half. Four out of 10 on the doubles. That equates to 40%, a high out of 104. And it was the timing of that 104 as well, which was just as crucial as he beats JK by four legs to two. We're going to take a short break. Upon our return, we're going to see Alex Small against Nathan Gervin. Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series. Chris Murphy alongside me to reflect on what we've already seen today. Murph Lauby consolidating his place at the top of the table with that 4-2 win. Were you impressed with him during that one? Yeah, I think it was um, not the, the peak Danny Lauby that we, we can get that we've seen in some games today, particularly against the, the other top two, but he did more than enough to get the better of Kelling, who was, you know, been a bit of a nuisance at times in that match and, you know, He's really helped Danny Lauby out today, hasn't he? Getting that win over Gervin earlier on. Um, but yeah, I think um, that 104 checkout, that, the checkout that I've talked about against Biowetsky earlier on today as well, that 129 was a, the real moment that kind of got him in the position he is. So I've been very impressed with Danny today. And he's been producing those key moments, those key finishes at such crucial times. Like you said, that 129 in particular really turned the tide in that match. We'll see what that's done to the league table. That'll be coming up there. So it is Danny Lauby who's now clear at the top. Gervin, we said, didn't we, before his last match, you know, how will he respond to that first defeat in nine? He then went on to miss nine mm. darts at a double in the first leg in that one. What do you see him doing here against Small, who's got his first victory of the day? Yeah, it's difficult because he's been the runaway leader. He's, I said, for the last couple of days he seems to have relished that but now he's in a completely different position and it's become a must-win match hasn't it because if Gervin doesn't win this game then Lauby's crown champion he can't be caught so it's a very very difficult position for Gervin to be in and one that he didn't think he'd find himself in so we'll I guess we'll see what he's made of Absolutely, and I certainly believed the confidence when he said that he'd enjoy being the player that everyone wanted to play. It doesn't look like it's going to turn out that way, but let's see if he can keep the pressure on Danny Lauby at least for another round of games. Here we go. Thank you very much, Abby. And so Nathan Gervin is at the point of no return. He has to win both of his remaining games and hope that there is a slip-up from Danny Lauby to 
progress through. Alex Small here has played some okay stuff at times. He's on eight points alongside Bellman and Kelly. And they just cancel each other out down the bottom end of the group. But can Gervin keep his hopes alive for qualifying for uh, Saturday night's finals? He was in pole position. No, he he was Alex the man in control and the man in command of the group off. overnight. And he thought that his superiority in terms of leg difference and things like that would be enough Six. to get him over the line if he couldn't do it on points. But it's been a far from ideal day for the man from Arbroath. Nine. And that is now won. why he finds him back firmly against the wall. He has to 100. beat Alex Small. And then hope. Forty-seven, sixty-five, ninety-eight. Chris Murphy has returned to the. Coventry box and a tentative start from Gervin who has had some struggles today it has to be said yeah didn't see it coming I'm not sure anybody did and I'm pretty sure Six. that the person who least expected it was Nathan Gervin himself spoke very very confidently to Abby at the end of yesterday having won all of his matches well, that was more like it but even when it goes right it goes wrong 46 well, he missed the double 16 twice for the 146 in the last match, Dave but he gets it in the first leg left. of this. Alex Small. Can you believe it? If at first you don't succeed, so try, and try and try and try again. Third time lucky for Alex Small, who takes out the big finish, the 146. The treble 19 hitting has been absolutely sublime from Small, but this time he adds a double to the equation as well. And piles the misery on Nathan Gervin, who, remember, if he loses this match, that's it. No, it's all over. Abby takes the place with a game to spare. Who would have thought that at the start of the day? Did you, Henry? It was inconceivable. It was inconceivable. You thought Nathan would, if he could win 60. three of his five, he'd be through. He thought that was a virtual guarantee. But credit to Lauby. He's made a push 100. on the last day. He's made his mark on Wednesday. Ninety-five. Now, it should be all about the 19s here for Alex Small. It is. How good is he hitting them? A brace again there. I was hoping to fill it up. The single 19 would have actually left him on a finish. 57. I think he'd be better off leaving 164 than 170, mind. Although he's not too bad on the treble 20s either. Go on, Alec, hit another. 165. Disappointed. Would have, would have been better off. Gervin has lost his grip on the group. One hundred and seventy. That can hardly be described as too little, but it may be too late. The small size is up double eight. Game and nails it to round. double his lead. Alex Small. And look at the face of Nathan Gervin. He wants to rewind time and start this day again. So look, it's Alex to throw first. But don't forget what Conor Heenan did last week. Won all five matches on Tuesday, ended up not winning the group, and then in Group B, we saw his best stuff. A personal best average of over 115. A nine-dart finish. 
There is inspiration to be drawn from that. Hey, two one. That'll be the last, you know, he'll be thinking at this present moment in time. One hundred. The darting world around him is just crumbling before his eyes. And when we looked at the fixtures for today, hey, we people. picked out that last match. Game 15, Nathan Gervin versus Sebastian Biewetsky. And we were all pretty sure it would have something Ooh, on it. T2. And if it didn't have anything on it, we thought it would be because Gervin would have already qualified. Well, he's having his darting Pompeii and Pompey, isn't he, at the minute? Uh, How long have you been waiting to say that? His chances could be reduced to rubble. 126. Because Alex Small is playing some of his best stuff this week here. Yeah, it's what we've been waiting for from him. The glimpses have become part of the course in this match. Putting it all together. 146 in the opening leg. But he's been allowed to flex his muscles by a a below par Nathan Gervin, who's had a woeful Wednesday 100. in truth. When he got over the line against Stefan Belmont in the first game, he won a brilliant battle, but since then it's been a a surprise slide. One hundred. I think it requires seventy six. This is a three nil. Well, he stayed there. He was going 20 for double 18. Ooh, hit the double five and, well, we've gone all around the but, board in about eight seconds. Well, I can only assume and the reason he's gone for the 20 is because he thought the dart might block the tops. But if that dart's blocking the tops, it's blocking the single 20 as well. He will come back with three clear at double 16 for a three-leg lead against the man who was leading this group for the first two days of action. Double four to get it. 24. Now then, Nathan. Nathan, you require 87. What have you got, Gervin? The Gervin grit has not been needed more than now. Great dart. Great start. Gage Great finish. Granite Nathan stuff Gervin. from Gervin, who halves the deficit. Survived three darts, a double there. And he breaks back. And maybe, well, just maybe, he's going to keep this fight alive. And that took some bottle in that scenario, in that situation. Huge yeah, credit to Nathan Gervin. We did speak about him over the course of the previous two days, how he would take his time over finishers. I think that one was the most prolonged addressing of the hockey we've seen. What's the issue here? Is it a noise? 23. He's not happy about something. And the referee, Owen Binks, is going to investigate. He's having, well, a, he's having a word with someone on the balcony. Not sure who's up there and whether they're supposed to be there or not. But Owen Binks is trying to sort things out, Henry. Gives the, the viewers a chance to look at your lovely face. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> hey, Tino. Oh, that's the best. I'm sure that was intentional. That, that's the best bit of directing that we've ever had here at the Super Series. And now you see hey, why I'm stuck in the commentary box and not upstairs. Fifty-seven. To be honest, you might as well just stick that on the highlights reel. Nathan Gerd will be hoping that the highlights of his day come late. Because it has been a bit of a darting disaster 100. for him today. Losing out to Lauby. Losing out to Biowetsky. And only just getting over the line against Stefan Bellman. It could have easily lost that game as well. But i tell you what, whatever happened, it's fired Gervin up. 59, I can 138. Maybe he just needed to let out that little bit of emotion, that little bit of anger.
64. Now, can you record 30? Double 19. But he's missed the big number as he tried to split, so he's only going to get one. A double eight. 30. I like you record 132. Bullseye. And now it's his turn to take a moment. Not something we've seen so much from Small. 107. Just couldn't find his way past the dart in the green. Require eight. To find the red bed. And Gervin can level the match. Double two for two two. That's a nasty dart, isn't it? It's a nasty, nasty dart. Four. And he only manages to land it alongside. I let you require 25. But now Smalls missed the big number. Well, at least this time he didn't bust the 25. He did that earlier on today. No score. Sorry, no, not right. Sorry. What's the issue here? Owen's called a no score from 23 points, I believe, there. It's double one required. Well, if he gets it now... 23. It would have been Nathan, you require composure four. personified, wouldn't it? A little error there from the referee. We're not going to hammer them for that. The referees make, what, one mistake every couple of weeks. I think the players make a couple every leg. Have you known a leg as crazy as this before? Maul can't Games look, the four but he player. can hear. Nathan Gervin. Well... Alex Small couldn't slam the door on Nathan Gervin's hopes, and now we're back at two apiece. Fifth leg, it's Alex to throw first. Game on. But crucially, both players are going to have to compose themselves here because there's a big 64. couple of minutes upcoming. Because if Nathan Gervin loses this game, his chances of progressing through group play are gone. They're finished. They're nada. And it would be Lowby that would progress his way through to Saturday night's Tungsten Showdown, which you can watch with us on Sporty Stuff TV. But even better, you can join us in the crowd. Free tickets available via dartshop.tv. So come and join us for the Saturday night darty party in Pompey. Right now, Gervin still has a chance hey, to get there through this group. And all of this amidst the bizarre backdrop of a ghost on the balcony. Oh, erroneous call by Owen Binks, which... I don't think I've ever seen before. What a ghost. Well, I've seen a few of those. 40. Alex Small. Now it's suddenly him, isn't it, That's that's got the, the body language of a man that's getting beaten. Gervin had that for the first couple of legs of the match. Just everything's gone wrong for him today. And it's one of those things, isn't it, when you... 58. Well, whatever noise happened obviously did happen, and it happened a couple of times, but when you're playing well, it doesn't bother you, does it? Ooh, and when you're too. not playing so well, it really affects you. And, with the, and, and as you mentioned, with the greatest of respect, that the players weren't playing at their A game before that, and it just feels like their minds are fried at this present moment in 56. time over the strange like shenanigans over the last couple of minutes. But can Alex Small... Put himself one away with Shanghai. No, he can't. Well, Just he... need to settle down a bit here, don't they, the pair? Yeah, absolutely. He needs to do something with this dart, to be honest. 24. He's Maybe only managed to leave himself on 96. I'm not even sure it was the right, it was the right segment to go for there, because 96 is a, a less likely finish than, say, 94. I think that showed a little bit of maturity there from Nathan Gervin. When Small finished his visit, just to go back to Six. the table. He knows how strange things have been. Just to recompose, just give himself that extra 96. few seconds, hopefully that extra bit of breathing space. Double, double. Yeah, had to. 39. But that was a problem with leaving 96 Nathan, rather than, say, 90. 94, where he could have gone the ball route at the beginning. Gervin on 90, he might go the ball route at either the beginning or end of this visit. It will have to be the end. 
What a shot. The what a finish. Nathan what a player. Jones. He's had to fight and scrap and battle today. And it looked like he was out of the fight. See, Blake, it's Nathan to throw first. The top spot in Group A. Game on. But he's one leg away from keeping himself in it. He stared up at the skies as he won his third leg. He's still staring down an opportunity to win the group. 140. One hundred and forty. But this is much better from the pair of them. And as much as one followed another in the crazy and madness oh of a couple six. of legs ago, is as much as they could follow each other in terms of the high scoring. One hundred and thirty. Well recovered. Well recovered there from Alex Small. Twenty-eight. It's just become oh, a real scrap, seven. hasn't it? Mm. Mm, it's about who can win ugly from here on in. It's who can fall over the line, pretty much, isn't it, at this stage? Small. 140. Giving himself a chance to break back, but Gervin with that tidy visit, the two treble turn, he's down to 97. 53. And Nathan suddenly, one, having been 2 nil down in this match, he's at match point. Double 12 to complete the comeback and to stay in the race. Game shot and Gervin grabs victory Nathan and he's had a little Gervin. look over the balcony again there. He's not happy with something. We'll try and find out exactly what went on that caused him a little issue earlier on. But Gervin got it right in the end. A 4-2 success to see off small and to keep himself in contention to take the available place at finals night from Group A. It goes on, and coming up next is Sebastian Biewetsky against Stefan Belmont. Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Nathan Gervin there getting a crucial win to keep his hopes of topping Group A alive as we can see the stats from that match. An 80 average from Nathan. 
really having to dig deep in that match, showing all of his grit, all of his determination to keep himself in with that chance. Incredibly scrappy at times. Gervin's frustration evident throughout that match. Clearly annoyed with something going away from the Oki. 44% checkout percent in that match. We'll take a look at the league standing because it is still Danny Lauby who's in pole position to top Group A. Of course, he's overtaken Nathan Gervin this morning. He's on 22 points. Nathan Gervin still within a chance going into our last round of matches, but he's going to need to win that one. He does still have the superior leg difference, of course. Next up, we are going to see Biowetsky, who doesn't now have a chance of topping the table. He is going to go into Group B be tomorrow evening he takes on Belmont both of them have been quite wasteful at the end of legs today so let's see how this one fares in the company of Chris and Henry thank you very much Abby indeed so nothing to play for for these two in terms of positions in the group it's going to be playing themselves into form for what remains of them this week for Biowetsky it will be group B Stefan Belmont it will be group C but we've seen signs of Biowetsky at his best today, though, at the Super Series, Murph. Yeah, we have. And he looked like he was going to keep himself in contention, didn't he, until that stunning 1-2-9 checkout from Danny Lauby in defeat to the American, the man who looks likely to top the group. And that could happen when he faces Stefan Belmont in his last match, the penultimate match of the day before that Alex Small and Jamie Kelling but if Belmont manages to beat Danny Lauby <coughs> then uh, Biowetsky will have a say won't he because he'll hey, take on Gervin in the last match of the day first. Game well, on. down from all the drama from that previous match hopefully this is a quiet serene shootout between Third, Seb and Stefan I, d I will promise the viewers one thing. It wasn't our presenter, Abby Davis, making any noise there. The ultimate Nine, professional. Nine. And doing a sterling job as well is Abby. Fifty nine. that far. I'm only joking. She is. She's doing an absolutely excellent job. As are you, Henry. Well recovered. Just waiting for the. Uh... Fee. Oh, I yeah. suppose, Matt. Well, thanks, mate. <laughs> You've had your moment. Well, Biowetsky's had his moments. Belmont had his big moment. A 117 Fee, was a glorious defeat to. to Gervin earlier on. But he did get a. a very nice victory against Kelling as well, didn't he? 4 2. 45. And I think he's playing himself into a bit of form. And it is all about keeping the form up ahead of tomorrow. 60. Where Murph departs, having done a sterling job this week. I will give you, I will praise you up. Yeah, we're going to reveal the uh, identity of the, to my replacement. 59. In the, the next match. So do stay tuned for that. I've given you a couple of clues already. The premier commentator who we're going to borrow. Just to clarify, 60. when we say replacement in the next match, Murph will still be with us. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Gonna have a nice 100. holiday, Henry. One hundred. That's nice for some. You won't let me uh, in your suitcase though for Belgium this weekend, would you? Definitely not. Although I will be getting some more chocolate. The kind we've had from the Belmont family. 140, you've 140. Although I must admit that the uh, Swiss chocolate in the commentary box has driven me to distraction. 40. Thank you, Mrs. Sebastian, Belmont. You 87. Anyway, Biowetsky wanting 87. Double five. Game Excellent finish from Sebastian way. Biowetsky, and that Sebastian could be the spark that this game needs. An 87 finish.
to give him the first leg. Second leg, it's Stefan to throw first. And will Belmont respond? And of course, on our social hey, media handles, we're wanting you to give us your pub quiz names for the Super Series quiz tonight. One it's not darts related, but I like this one. What about Quizzy Rascals? Well, I mean, it, you could make it darts related if you replace Dizzy with Chizzy. Bonkers. 43. Is that it? Is that all you've got? What was it you said yesterday? Quality, not quantity? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that all you've got? Thank God I've got a guest commentator with me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the darts. 100. And there aren't really any questions that are going to be answered in this game, are there? It is a couple of kind of dead rubbers coming up. Nine. This one small versus Kelling. One hundred and thirty-three. He's in self one forty after twelve. Eight. That's unlucky. That's unlucky because that was in the Seven, treble. One hundred and forty. So. Belmont 140 to level us up. Otherwise, it's, well, he went the 18s route. The Rob Cross route for the 140. The Bierecki will return for 124 for a break of throw and a 2 0 lead. 92, Sebastian, you've got 124. Fancy him, you know, to take this out. Treble 18 for the ball. 40. And there goes Seven another prediction. 48. Go on, you have a try, Henry. This is going to go. This dart will hit double eight. Yeah, that dart will hit double leg. eight. See you Stephen later, Murph. I'm off. I've peaked. Thank God for that. <laughs> well, it's one of yeah, peaks between Biowetsky and Belmont yeah, after that double eight. But it is a little bit of a a damp squib so far. 140. It feels like day five of a test match when you know that they're playing for a draw. Ninety-six. That's a nice lie with the first dart, was it? No, it goes underneath for the second. 97. Just a reminder of who joins the darty party in week nine tomorrow and Friday. In group C, we'll see Aaron Monk, Kurt Parry and Lee Cox return Four, to two, the one. tournament. Whereas in group B, I'm really looking forward to this. I have to say, Colin Osborne, Matt Dennant, Scott Williams. Oof. Good luck picking three from five from that is all I'm going to say. That's tomorrow on Friday's evening session from 10 here on Sporty Stuff TV and the Moda Super Series hey, YouTube channel. Eight. Don't forget to give us a subscribe. We've got plenty of content coming up. We've got some content with the players as well and, and things like that. That's going to be up there over time. You may even see bits and bobs from Six. us commentators on there too. So plenty to... Keep you entertained here at the Super Series. 100. Hey, 2 1. Sebastian, you have a quarter. So 106 for 2 1. Sebastian starts to try and put in a better performance. Game show on the third leg. And he claims Sebastian it up. Sebastian Biowetsky. Fourth leg, it's Stefan to throw first. One 
hundred. Ninety six. So, still to come, Small V Kelling, Belmont V Lauby. Lauby can wrap up the group by beating Belmont in that match. And then Gervin against Biowecki in a battle of the players who we expect now to be in Group B. But if Belmont can spring surprise against Lauby, then that could be a match that has everything on it at the end of the day. Biowecki's up the level here, 87 average. 140. We mentioned earlier, these types of games are tough ones for players to play because they know that nothing is at stake. They know their destiny. They're darting Three, destiny eight. for the next two days. And Belmont now gets the dart back. The Bioeki against the foe had real control of this four flag. 23. Belmont. Just too many erratic visits. 61. Look at this leg as a case in point. 142, 140, 23. 78. Sebastian, you're 146. Seen Alex Small hit this today. Can Bioetsky join the 146 club? No. Not on this occasion. So Belmont returns for 118. I'll try it the other way, Henry. I can't see this happening. It's gone a silly route as well. It'll never happen. Surely not. Game That's me off. See you later. Back. Stephen Belmont. Shut the door on the way out. Oh dear. Fifth leg, it's Sebastian to throw first. Went the wrong route and everything. Make sure you get your sat nav on the way home. Well, if you can produce stuff like Three, that three against Lauby in his last match, then things could be interesting towards the end of the afternoon. But where did it come from? 140. Well, moving into the action for the rest of the week. We'll see the favourite to win week nine in action tomorrow night, Scott Williams. He's a 7-2 to two favourite to win week nine. Then Matthew Dennant, who enters the fray, is 5-1. to one. Colin Osborne at 7s. Aaron Monk, 10s. Kurt Parry, 16s. And Lee Cox at 20s. Remember, it's 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. And when the fun stops, stop. Well, I think Biorexky's got a little bit of running repair to do. I think he's got a broken stem. Yeah, well, just having to wait before we get the action back underway after fixing whatever the problem was. No, nope, send them back to the mechanics. Hell, the darting MOT. 45. And again, it's another turn where Belmont has put himself in a decent position with three trebles in his first six starts, but then gone wayward in a visit that just opens the door. 59. But Biowetsky, although it was the polo through first in this leg, and Belmont is still in pole position. That wasn't even intended, by the way. That was. One that was hundred and eighty. Well, completely famine or feast for Seven Belmont in this match. Well, Belmonte was a famous bullfighter in Spain in the late eighteen hundreds. Well, Belmont seen the red three times there. He wants to see it for a fourth in succession if he can pin this double eighteen for a break of throw and a thirteen dart leg. Well, if he misses double nine. 
18. Then Sebastian Biewetski might be fighting the bull at the end of this combo. 60. Can't find it. The Belmont will return. Maybe might think about splitting. 95. Stephanie Maguire, 18. Straight forward, and that's on the wire. That might be a helpful guide. Well, at least he's had all three darts Nine. at it, but he hasn't found the double Sebastian with any of them. 75. And Biowetsky can regain the lead. 18 for tops. Game and there it the is, player. and he's one away. Sebastian Biowetsky. And for all the scoring struggles, he hasn't missed a dart at double yet, Biowetsky. And he's now one away. Belmont Stephen is throwing to, throw to stay in the leg, stay in the match. He hit a 180, didn't he, to lead 36 and then missed six darts from that point. Well, you made the point. Biowetsky's only 39. had three darts at double in the entire game. Hit the lot. Sparked by that 106. Trebles are troubling, but the doubling 77. is absolutely delightful. From the 19 year old. Sixty. Just a mind of what the players are playing for. They're playing for a place at Champions Week in the middle of October. There's a £41,000 prize fund that week. This is week nine of the 12 week process that gets us there. And already there is Robert Owen, Chaz Barstow, Graham Hall. Darrell Pilgrim, Lee Evans, Kieran Tierney, who won the first ever night here at the Modus Live Lounge, Graham Usher, and Conan Whitehead, who beat Ryan Finesse in the final on Saturday night. And Ryan brought a fair few fans down with him, didn't he, for that occasion. So who is going to join that eight-player field for the finals this week? We'll find out over the next couple of days. And we've got some interesting oh, feels for the week too. ahead. For the, all the weeks ahead, should I say. But we're going to keep them under wraps for now. We're going to keep you guessing. Just like who our guest commentator is tomorrow. But you haven't got too much longer to wait until you find out the person's identity. Might be very, very soon. Because Biowetsky has set up 90 to win the match. We saw... Nathan Gervin hey, take out that three. exact checkout to Rest win the previous match. 90. Well, he's not going to get a treble, is he? No, it's the bull again. 56. Stephen, you require a He's missed seven. one. He's left it awkward as well. Double 17. The least hit double on the board. May not even get a go because here comes Stephen Belmont once again. Just keeps appearing hey, from he's nowhere. The sick flare. Stephen Belmont. He just, well, I think the story of this match for Stephen Belmont is quite simply this. He's lost the legs he should have won, and he's Seven won the legs he should have lost. Sebastian to throw first. Make it make sense. One hundred and thirty seven. Ninety seven. So, following the conclusion of this, obviously, Alex Wall against Jamie One Kenning, and then the match after that, Danny Lauby can secure his place into Saturday night's final if he can get a victory against the man walking past Biowetsky now, Stefan Belmont. That'll be his final game of Group A, and then Biowetsky will finish the show, bring the curtain down on Group A as he takes on Nathan Gervin. That could be either a dead rubber, or it could be a run to the line One for the Scott. We're about to find out in due course. Biowetsky is down at 179. Belmont's on a finish. But it's the pole who could leave it the more handy. 99. Seven, you record 164. To do it in style, it would be typical of his performance in this match. Out of absolutely nowhere, 
139. And he almost did it again. Sebastian, you're required. Would have been darting escapology and then some. It would have been ironic, if anything. Dioetsky wants tops. Look at his face. Look at Stefan's Six. face in the background there. That's the first Stephanie time I've seen it change all 25. week. Can the man called Belmont seal the win? No. 30. Sebastian, you're required 20. Well, double 10 then for Biowetsky to get the better of Belmont. In what was a scrappy Going affair. Shot on the but it's a scrap that has been won Sebastian by Sebastian Biowetsky. in a, a group that has had a clear golfing class between the top three and the bottom three. That might not have been evident in the performance overall, but it was certainly evident in the finishing. Four out of seven for Sebastian Biowetsky, just three out of 13, including a match start, a couple of match starts, in fact, for Stefan Belmont. So we do move on to our final three matches, starting with Alex Small against Jamie Kelling, and then the group winner will be decided. Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series. We've got three more matches coming your way as we enter the final round of games here in Group A. We've just seen Biowetsky come through a last leg decider against Stefan Belmont. Nothing to play for in that last match. Both of them already know they'll be returning for more darting action on Thursday and Friday. But there was still pl plenty of drama in that one. Belmont with moments of brilliance in that match. Just lacking in a bit of consistency, Biowetsky with an 84 average, four out of seven on the doubles. That was one of his more clinical displays on the outer ring in that one. So let's have a look at how that affects the table. As I said, there was nothing really to play for in that last match, and it's the same for our next game, which is small against Kelling. Both of them know that they will be in Group C come tomorrow morning. 
So then, going into this match, it's Kelling, who's produced some really, really good darts against the two players at the top of the table. Of course, getting the better of Nathan Girvan before giving Danny Lauby a slight scare in his last match. How will he fare up against Alex Small? Let's find out in the company of Henry and Chris. Thanks, Abby. Yes, it is a, a second... Well, it's dead rubber of sorts, but whoever wins this game will probably finish top of that mini-league in the bottom half of the table. We'll probably get fourth place. And it's all smiles with nothing too heavy at stake in this one. Alex Small having a little chat and chuckle with Owen Binks. Our referee. And he'll take on Jamie Kelling, who has produced some decent stuff today and produced the most important result of the day, which was a 4-1 win against Nathan Gervin earlier on. The next couple of matches will decide who tops the table. It's in the hands of Danny Lauby, who takes on Stefan Belmont in game 14 before Gervin meets Biowetsky in hey, the last Gervin game is Alex to throw of first. Group 8. But before that, game on. it is Small versus Kelling. And the first thing we're going to do, Henry, is announce who no, will be sat in my chair tomorrow. Over to you to do the honours. We have the three-time Lakeside Champion Whoa, of the World and the former Premier League lazy. champ, that is Duzza Glenn Dowen, sat in the chair 96. for the rest of the week. There Cannot we go. Wait. Proper expertise. The man who's been there, done it, and we'll be here to talk about it. I'm looking forward to having a listen in. And maybe at some point working with Glenn. I did get the uh, pleasure of working with him actually at Lakeside, and I can assure you, Henry, that you've got a very, very good co-commentator joining you tomorrow. Indeed. And a very well-researched commentator as well. He's coming to us for the first time. Looking forward to that very much so. So, so travels down Glen today and look forward to working Ooh, with you five. for the rest of the week. Maybe you say things as Ooh, nice about me when I'm not here. I've been very complimentary of you, Chris. 80. Good lad. Like you require 148. Well, well, Small produced a good finish here. Not to be, so Kelling will return, looking at the 110. 36. Jamie, you require 110. May stay there, you know. Mm, look like a decent lie. 54. Alec, you require 112. Yeah. Triple 17. We'll let him a dart at tops. 40. Jamie, you're going to a little bit scrappy. But can Kelling reel off the first Eight leg on tops? Leg. It's a little Kelling. bit like the last game where the scoring was a bit suspect, but the doubling was pretty good. And it's an immediate break of throw for Jamie Seven Kelling. Jamie to throw first. You so, uh, might put this down as a fairly decent day. Uh, beating Nathan Gervin really One was a standout result, as we mentioned. And he hasn't been really battered in any of his 140. games. 140. I think it is going to be tough if this pair don't pick up their levels. 121. To get one of those top two places in Group C with the incoming players. And I think Stefan Belmont has probably been the player that has improved the most as the week has gone on out of these three. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd tend to agree with you on that. He's probably the one to watch going into tomorrow and Friday's group, which will be with me and Glenn in comms. Abby will be up on the balcony from 9.30 tomorrow morning here on Sporty Stuff TV in the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. Yeah, he'll be a good friend and neighbour of Kellings joining the, the group as well, Aaron Monk, along with another Welshman like Small in Kurt Parry. And then Lee Cox completes the field. 98, Jamie Rickwine, 96. 
38. And is that break going to be cancelled? Cancelled out straight away. 66. Well, I can only assume he was aiming for the bullseye there. He'll now be aiming for double 16, no, but he won't be finding it and might be finding himself halfway to defeat. Two at tops. Game's on the second Two from two on the doubles Jamie for Jamie Kelling. Kelling. Two from two on that specific double. And he leads Alex Small by two legs to nil in this one. Two legs, Alex Small has the first. darts in the third. And we were asking earlier on today as well as part of our Fee, get Fee involved Green. campaign here at the Super Series for some names of pub quiz teams, darting related ones if possible. I like this one. Six. Price is right. Again, it's in the spelling, isn't it? 140. Spelling you'd like. What about an actual Super Series themed quiz team name, Henry? I'm going to task you with that one before the end of the day's play, please. Well, last week we had Tungsten Six Time, five. which... Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, from the uh, infamous MC, Paul Starr. 55. We are ready. Star by name. Star by name. No, no, star by name. Let's <laughs> leave it there. Well, it's the pub quiz beats working, I suppose. 140. Alex's last score was 93. So just a, an alteration of the score here. We'll put Alex Small on 150. Alex, you require 150. Yeah, he went for it. I knew it would happen at some point. Went ball first dart there. Got nowhere near it. But might have a go at it with one dart. I was going to say when he comes back, but the when has become an if because Kelling can go for the ball himself. Seven and it's one. bounced off the wire. Alec, I think it was in the 25. Go on, Alec. Go on, Alec. No, you disappointed us, Alec. Well, if he misses, then Jamie can have a go himself. Game's on the third leg. But he doesn't miss. Alex and Small. he halves the deficit. 2-1. Spoil sport. But I do think these are the games for that little bit of entertainment. There you see. Well, look, it's James rejected by the ring. You've been watching Married at First Sight? One no, I, we, I think we had this discussion yesterday, Henry. I don't watch the same TV programmes as you do. <laughs> It's a, it's a young man's game, that. 140. We'll get to the serious business after this match, though, because it is going to be the two games, or maybe just the oh, one game, three. that decides the destination of the first group 60. of the week. Who will progress straight through to finals night? Who will pass go and get to skip a couple of days? And maybe B9. even collect a bit more than £200 on Saturday night. 5000 on offer. And that plays at Champions Week. 42. Do you know what? I've never played Monopoly in my life. 45. Is that just a random fact? Oh, because I said uh, don't pass it. I get it now, Henry. Yeah. We're finding a lot out about you, aren't we, over the course of these commentary sessions? Hey, you leave want... a little bit of mystique for the viewers. I feel like we've known each other for all of your life. 96. Not that long, actually. Well, 158 for Kelling. 75 for... Going to be under some pressure. 103 remaining before this 92. start. 92. Jamie, you 158. We will definitely get no, some showmanship for the rest of the week because Scott 86. Williams is entering the field tomorrow evening and he is the greatest showman in this sport. Will he be the greatest throwman come the end of the week? Tops, he loves it up here. He hasn't missed one 42. yet, but he has now. Like so small returns of 49. Well, that was a little bit precarious, you know. It was almost Owen Binks correctly calling no score. 
Game shot on the fourth leg. He correctly calls Alex game shot on the fourth leg instead as Alex Small levels. But it looks like these two meaningless matches are both going to go the Alex distance. Alex to throw first. I know it might have meaning for some of you. Game on. But they can be the, the gamblers ruin, can't they? The games that have got nothing on them. 53. Next one has huge repercussions for Danny Lowby, the drummer from the United States, against Stefan Belmont. 140. You best drum up that one. 96. Well, it's Lowby, the drummer, against the Swiss Stefan Belmont, isn't it? So we should have a drum roll, really. Kellen getting on a roll here. 180. 140, followed by 180. Twenty-four. Thirty. Well, he was on a roll. That quickly stopped. Forty-two. Jamie record one hundred and fifty-one. One hundred and thirty-one. Yeah, good setup from Kelly. By the way, we mentioned the uh, the MC Paul Star and his tungsten time mantle. Jamie, of course, does 20. MC the World Seniors event, and those of you who want tickets on Saturday night here for free, by the way, you can get them from the darkshop.tv. That's Kelly. also where you can find out more information and book tickets for the World Seniors. The World Championship confirmed again for next February. Super League, it's Jamie to throw first. Well, there was that ghost again marching across the shot. It's like a special song, isn't it? One hundred. Don't worry, I won't sing. Eighty-five. To be fair, this is probably the longest 85. you've seen me on a Mike Murph without blasting out a tune. Yeah. Thank the Lord for small mercies. 42. Sixty. Kelling closing in. Ninety six. One hundred. Fifty. Jamie, record 156. To win the match in style. Not going to happen at this juncture, but he is going to Six. return Alex Small back on 2-2-8. Don't forget to join us for our next match as Danny Lalby looks to secure progression through Group A as he faces Stefan Belmont. But here and now, Jamie Kelling is 96 points away from sealing victory against Alex Moore. It's not going to happen on this occasion. He's going to return for tops unless Small can find something inspired. That was far from desired. I can only assume that it got sort of Jamie fell out of his hand forward. unless that, that ghost on the balcony was messing around with a, a bottle or something. Shot the match. But Kelly Jamie keeps his Kelly. ball and gets over the line. Wins 4-2 against Alex Small. Uh, they will be back in Group C tomorrow from 9.30. But the next match may well decide who doesn't have to play on Thursday and Friday because if Danny Lowby can beat Stefan Belmont, and he will top the group. That is coming right up after this.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. We've just seen Jamie Kellen record his second victory of the day, a 4-2 win over Welshman Alex Small. An 83 average for Jamie to end the day. Four out of seven on the outer ring, 57% checkout success. That really is the biggest strength of his game. But his scoring has certainly improved as the day has gone on as well. But after two games with very little riding on them we can see when we look at the table that this is the game that really matters it's all in Danny Lauby's hands he knows that if uh, if he wins here over Stefan Belmont he will secure his place at the top of group A and confirm his place in finals night he's had the perfect start to the day so far hasn't he winning all four of his matches can he make it five out of five he's the player he's level with on the Challenge Tour. They've both got £2,400 on the Challenge Tour order of merit, Stefan Belmont and Danny Lauby. But Danny Lauby is certainly the player who's produced the best in Group A this week. So can he get that all-important win to seal his spot at finals night? Let's find out with the chaps. Can Lauby lob his way to glory? If Danny can defeat Belmont, he will be the man who progresses through Group A here at the Super Series. For Stefan Belmont, he is playing the role of spoiler in this game. And if he does, it will give Nathan Gervin a chance when he takes on Sebastian Bioretsky in the last game. If Danny does it here, everything is set in stone. Following the conclusion of Game 14 of 15 here on Wednesday. But Belmont has shown at times he can produce some good stuff. And he produce it here. Yeah, Lavi wants to take advantage of the position he's put himself in with a little bit of help from Jamie Kelly, who beat Nathan Gervin earlier on. Hey, Belmont Gervin almost Stephen did in the very first back. match of the day. That one went the distance. 4-3. And Gervin will be hoping that Stefan does to Danny kind of what he did to him hang around like a bad smell 60 now be has to break at some point Ooh, if he is to keep control of his darting destiny if we take a look at the league table we just saw it with Abby at the top of the show so if Stefan Belmont does manage to spring a surprise here then Nathan Gervin will be two points behind Danny Lauby, but will have a better leg difference. So it will mean that Gervin will simply have to beat Biowetsky in the final match to top the group. Nice and simple. The equation 95. here. If Lauby wins, it's over. He's through. 57. It's going to be there's going to be at least eight points between third and fourth place. It really has been. We used the cliche, didn't we, at the start of the day, group of two halves, but it really has been this week. One hundred. And if I cast your mind back all the way to Monday evening, when we thought this was going to be a really tight and contested group because of the way the opening results in the group went. And it was six 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 four four four, wasn't it, in terms of points after one day's play? So two points from top to bottom has become potentially 16 points if Lavi wins this match. Which is absolutely incredible when you think about it. So Belmont returns to 52 to win the opening leg. Tops.
So, T2. We did have to step back there. You, you may have heard a little siren in the background. We are in a more open arena than we were in the almost soundproof room in Southampton, and those kind of things are unavoidable, especially when we are here without an audience during 20. the week. You won't hear it on a Saturday night, but you will have that wall of noise from the exclusive crowd here at the Live Lounge. Double five for first blood. Ten. He fails to find it. He's now 20. missed five. And Lowby Game makes the, the most of his look once again. Danny Lowby. Steps in when he needs to step in. A chance he has had to ride his luck. But when he's been Seven given the opportunities, more often than not, he's taken them. And he leads 1-0 here. Break a throw. He needed to get one in the match. So if you're going to do it, do it in the first. Yeah, Stefan Six. Belmont gives him a sniff. And Danny Lowby gets rid of it as quickly as possible. I mentioned yesterday 60. about how Danny Lowby's experience of winning big events in America this year, perhaps being the most common winner of this group over recent times of events, could come into play when we're getting towards the final throws. And I feel like maybe it has. 180. Yeah, we certainly, in a way, in a way, do you think, and it's probably a, a very One difficult question to ask, but we've seen players thrive having had days rest. Maybe some players that are a little bit more older and seasoned have more taxing throws. Do you think it might actually suit Danny Lowry to be playing in Group B and keep rolling, and keep the arm going? Or do you think he will benefit from a couple of days off? I mean, with Danny compared to a lot of other players as well, you've got to factor in jet lag. I know he's been over in the country now for the best part of a week, but six-hour time gap. He'd probably pre prefer the evening sessions because he'd be more suited to American time than these morning sessions are, which actually probably makes the achievement of getting One through group A an even more miraculous one because he's had to play at start times back home of 4.30. 60. Well, Belmont once again has an opportunity. He's missed five darts to hold his throw in the first leg. He'll get a dart to break Lowby's throw in the second. That dart is at double 16. And that's 85. missed as well. Danny require 81. The bullseye. 56. Just underneath. And so Belmont Danny returns for double eight to get the break back and to level us up. Well, Lavi can't keep relying on Game Belmont missing, and he's stopped missing now. Stephen Belmont. All square, and the hard work, the break of throw that Lauby landed immediately is immediately undone. Well, it's Stefan to throw first. Is Stefan going to be that spoiler? Is he going to offer the opportunity to Nathan Gervin and take us right down to the wire in this group? 79. And it has been a group that's just... Changed in dynamic time and time again, hasn't it, Henry? You One mentioned after that first day, it looked like it was going to be a really closely contested league. And then it looked like it was going to be no contest as Gervin ran away. It's recently looked like Lauby was going to make oh, the sprint finish, but he could be pegged back here and it could be back in Gervin's hands. And this is what we love about this format no, because it's so it. interchangeable. Nothing is set in stone. Nothing's guaranteed. And with every single game that passes, a different circumstance, consequence, scenario comes up, rears its head. And suddenly here, Stephen Belmont's found something. He's found another gear. Lowry's going to have to up it here. Otherwise, he's in huge trouble. Huge trouble. Two visits to clean this up. And that looks like a, a nice guide. One hundred. Tunt will do very nicely indeed. Lowry has to hit big, and all he can do here is hit and hope. One hundred and thirty-seven. That'll do a job. 47. If Belmont cannot take out the forty-seven, two sixteens. Game shot the third. And it is two-one to Stefan. And suddenly, things are beginning to get interesting. Maybe that last game could be well, worth something. Danny to throw first. 
Lauby's going to have to do it from behind. 134. Because if he loses here, Gervin will be breathing down his neck. Because of the scoreline in this match, it's now confirmed that Stefan Belmont will be finishing fifth in this Group A table. Can't catch Jamie Kelling on leg difference, but can't lose enough legs for Alex Small to be lifted off the bottom of the table either. 140. The Lauby's position may be out of his hand suddenly. Here he comes. 140. Here he comes. Oh my. 140. A Danny big 140 from Belmont. A 127 may have to go. It may still go. Double Danny eight. That is superb from Danny, Danny Lauby. What a time for a 1 2 7 and game. That could be a game changer in the group. We've legged Stefan to throw first. Well, perhaps. Perhaps the next edition we need to make to the coverage is a practice room camera. Because I just would like a penny for the thoughts of Nathan Gervin at that moment. Belmont was in a brilliant position in the leg. Ooh, left himself 81. After nine darts. And then Lauby lands a big one, two, seven. See him in the background nodding away there. He thinks that that could be Please, the tungsten the tide end. turner. He had a one, two, nine earlier. That one, two, seven is right up there with it. 92. The timing of the big finishes have been pretty much perfect for Lauby. One hundred. But these constant ton visits have given Belmont opportunities. One hundred. Can't be prized apart in this leg. One hundred. A flow of your tons. One hundred. Harry Crave, another one. One hundred. Danny Rock, one hundred and Yet another ton. Well, again, it's an 80-something finish that Belmont has left himself on. This time you will get a go at it. Treble 17 will be the target. This is turning into his best performance, not just of the day, but of the week. 51. But Lauby has the chance for another ton-topping checkout to put himself on top in more ways than one. Treble 16, the route to leave double top. Eight, he's eight. not quite managed to find Seven it. Another 32. chance beckons for Belmont. Steps back to recompose. And that's similar to the dart in his previous visit. And I wonder how much of that Aim he can see. He can see right. enough. Stephen Belmont. Belmont's on the brink. This is getting interesting, folks. Stefan Belmont is one first. leg away from inflicting the first defeat of the day on Danny Lauby, who just needed Nine, to win this seven. match against a player with nothing to play for to secure his spot of finals night as the winner of Group 8. Nathan Gervin is in the practice room, willing Six, Stefan eight. Belmont to win one more leg so that he can go out and snatch that spot off Lauby when Six, he faces... Sebastian Biewekski in the final match of the group. In a similar no, vein to Belmont, Biewekski himself has his fate sealed. 
42. Is Stefan Belmont smelling victory? 100. Can he sniff the scent? 81. Of success. And deny Danny Lauby the group glory. One hundred. A ton is okay. But Lauby needs two trebles. Of that, there is no doubt. And that makes things difficult. And to be fair, yeah, to find one, that's good enough five. when you consider the lie of the first dart. One, four, five. To win the match and keep Gervin's hopes alive. And so Lauby on one, two, one. He's already had a one, two, seven. And you sense that this might have to go. Huge moment. Well, going that route, hitting the bullseye hey, doesn't really want... help, does it? He's still, still got to find a treble 80. and a double. And now Belmont just needs two singles to get a dart to win the match. Oh, now he needs 25 and Bolt. Now he needs Bolt. Go Unbelievable. Go match. By Belmont, Belmont. Who defeats Danny Lauby and sends Group A into the final match. Nathan Gervin has got the result he needed. And all he has to do now is beat Sebastian Bierwetzki to regain top spot at the expense of Danny Lauby, who has been denied by Stefan the Spoiler Belmont in the penultimate game of the day, having won his previous four to put himself at the top with his fate in his own hands. Now his fate is in the hands of Gervin and Sebastian Biewetski in the crucial, pivotal match at the end of the day, and it is coming right up.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series. It is all still to play for with one game remaining. I am joined by Danny Lauby. Of course, you have won four out of five of your games today. But after that last game, how are you feeling? Uh, a bit tired, but uh, no, I was hoping to get five. But Steph and played class, as to be expected. It uh, would have made things easier to win that last one, but you know, leave it to me to make things dramatic. And, of course, you took out that 1-2-7. It looked like that could have been a turning point. You've taken out some big tumblers finishes at crucial moments today, haven't you? That 1-2-9 earlier on in the day, a 104 as well. They have been crucial for you. Yeah, I've been happy with my finishing. Um, I've been happy with my play this whole time, really. I just, uh, I'm usually tend to be kind of a scrappy player, you know, play to the energy of the other player, which is, could be a good thing and a bad thing at times. And uh, probably should have just... Uh, to be consistent and play at a certain level the whole time would be ideal. But um, you know, hats off to Stefan, and he's made things difficult for me, as he should. So we'll see what happens. And we saw glimpses of your best starts on days one and two, but today you have played at a more consistent level, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would hope so. It's experiences. There's really no substitute for it, and I've been coming here enough. I'm staying here now. Uh, my friend Jamie's uh, just been putting me up this whole time and taking care of me, so it's... Um, a lot of lessons to be learned being over here, and uh, I think I think I should be getting the hang of it and any day now. <laughs> and your first time playing in this new environment, how have you found the Moda Super Series? It's been terrific. Oh, it's a great venue. Um, you know, church, creepy church. I love it. It's like honestly, it's really cool here. It's a different vibe, a great venue, great stage. Love it. I'm happy to be here. Hope to be back. Absolutely, and we've Saturday. got one. I was going to say, you don't want to you don't want to leave it too we'll long, tomorrow, do you? I guess, yeah. have to be. But we're going to have a little look at the table now. I'm sure you don't want to take a look at it right now, but we have got one more game remaining. You are still top as things stand. Of course, that could change if Nathan gets the win in the last game. Are you going to be watching it downstairs? Probably, probably, I guess. I like just because I like Nathan. Usually, I don't. Um, Nathan's been playing class the whole time. Uh, he was top this whole week, I believe. Um, I, mean, I don't have a bad thing to say about the guy. You know, if he plays this game, he should be ahead. But this room's full of good players, and uh, I guess we'll just see what happens. Make things interesting. And that's one of the keys, isn't it? This group has been littered with so much talent yeah, that it's been it's congested at the top throughout. Oh, the whole time. Yeah, it's, uh, there's no time to breathe, it seems like. You know? So give up breathing if you want to play here, but let's go. Hopefully you'll continue to breathe whilst watching that downstairs. So it is time for our last match of the afternoon. Can Nathan Girvin beat this guy to top spot and book his place in Group A? Let's find out. Well, thanks, Abby. Welcome back to the Creepy Church. It is the Modus Live Lounge here at the Super Series. And Danny and Abby, I'm sure, will be finding a little space to pray somewhere in this arena as Nathan Girvin gets his last chance saloon shootout underway. And to be honest... The silver lining, perhaps, Henry, for Danny Lauby, is that if you were going to pick a player other than yourself in this group to do the business for you, you would probably pick Sebastian Biowetsky. He'd certainly be right up there, wouldn't he? And I've got to give credit to Danny. He spoke very well there on, on the back of defeat. Not just is he a really good hey, darts like player, he's a really a good guy as well. So credit to him for speaking so openly and, and honestly there. And you'll be hoping that he won't have to return here tomorrow or Friday. He'll be back on Saturday for the big one, for the final. But Nathan Gervin's going to have other ideas. Victory for him, and he will be in to Saturday night's darting finale. And Danny Lauby will make the trip across the 100. coast. 100. Currently staying in Bournemouth, I believe. We were saying at the start of the show today that leg difference could, be, could come into play. And 100. If Nathan Gervin does win, he will win the table on leg difference. And yesterday will turn out to be where he won it when he had such a dominant day of darts. 60. The fact that he won five from five and Lauby couldn't do that today. That's what it could all hinge and pin on. 140. And German's made a good start to this game. Yeah, certainly looks like he means business. Maybe boosted by the confidence of seeing Belmont beat Lauby in that previous match. 39. But full and credit as well, and, and Danny did give credit to Stephen Belmont for causing him a problem. Nobody wants to lose any game of darts. They all go up every game and try and play the best. Nine. Nine. 
And for Nathan here, it's perhaps a second chance, which maybe he wasn't expecting the way Danny was playing today. 98. So he's looking to take full advantage of that against Biowetsky. Top stops. Mm, I don't think he will. No need to, is there, with Biowetsky not on a finish. That's why he's gone for the treble. Game shot in the first. And he's leg. very authoritatively landed the double. Still having a little glance at the balcony. Danny Lau, we did call it a creepy church, and we did show that there may be some ghosts around. Second leg Sebastian but to nothing first. seeming to knock Nathan out of his stride at the start of this match. Well, Fee German had to rely on the spirit of Stefan Belmont to be in this position. It, is, I think it really does add to the character of the event, doesn't it? It's a, an old converted church that has been reused as a, a bar and now has become the Modus Live Lounge. The fantastic 60. work that's gone in behind the scenes to move us from that that room in Southampton that served a fantastic purpose and gave players opportunities, but now they're getting hey, better experience, up. bigger experience, and bigger prize checks as well. Do you think it was a ghost that threw that Lowby dart on Monday? Well, possibly. 85. Well, Lowby might be looking like he's seen one if Gervin does win here. It was Gervin's to lose, wasn't it, all week, and then it suddenly became Lowby's to lose. Has he lost it? Can Gervin grab it back? 140. Bioetsky has had the better of the second leg, though. It was a quiet first for Seb. There are the darts in the second. He's a score hey, in front of Gervin. He's going to get six and 157 to level up this pivotal match. No treble just offers a little bit of optimism. And it is a trebleless turn from Bioetsky, who... We'll be looking to come back and take out a ton, but no guarantee of a dart at a double. Needs to just stay straight to leave a finish of any kind. 60. Manages that. Then you require 100. Now it will be tops, tops. It's not. Called the bluff, 80. but not taken out then the finish. You require 170. Well, this would be... Some way to open up a 2-0 lead in the game you have to win to win the group. Not going to happen. So Bioetsky will be back for double 10 to level us up. 60. Sebastian, you require 20. Two tens. Game shot on the second leg. Sebastian left. stays. Sebastian Bioetsky. That's another Polish darts player, isn't it? Sebastian Steyer. So I guess Nathan to throw first. And he's sticking around in this match, Biowetski, for now, after that flying start from the Scotsman. On the subject of Sebastian Steyer, he'd have actually the appropriate walk on song for this venue B Personal B Jesus by Depeche Mode. Well, the question is whether or not. Nathan Gervin will be staying another Aye, day or two, before. or whether they'll be having those days off and preparing for finals night. It has all come down to this. And it's a match, as we quite often see, 92. at the Moda Super Series between two players where one of them's not actually playing in the match. This is a game between Lauby and Gervin, isn't it? Biowetsky in to bat for the American. Yeah, it's a match with three players, but only two can throw at one time, pretty much. 60. It'd be like the equivalent of... Lauby be the equivalent of waiting outside Dixon's at 4.45, waiting for the results to come in. I'm too young to know that, by the way. Well, I've just wondered what was going on in your life that it was making you do that, Henry, but... 41. I'll ask you after. Make sure you're all right. Too engrossed in this for now, because this is a crucial contest. 43. 
Uh, Biawetsky, by the way, his position's not going to change. Whatever happens, he, he would go level on points with Gervin if he were to win this match. But before the game, he's 12 legs worse off. 140. Great timing for 140. Going to get a go at the 111. Biowetsky would crave a 137 from this juncture. It's not going to happen. Locked himself out, hasn't he? 59. That's why he had to switch. So it's all the ones for Nathan Gervin to take a 2-1 lead. But Biowetsky is poised in similar territory. This could be the pivotal exchange in the contest. Big moment, big pause. No, is it a big five. miss? Sebastian, you require 118. How crucial will this be? 18. Tops. No, that could eight. have been seismic for Seb. Nathan, you require Gervin 16. Gervin returns for the double eight. Well, again, you can see him prolonging the addressing of the hockey. Takes aim after taking his time. Game's on the third leg. And he's Nathan now two Gervin. legs away. He needed a result to go his way and then to make the most of that result going his way. Both leg it's Sebastian and he's held his nerve Game and on. his throw to lead Sebastian Biowetsky by two to one. That sounded cool. You would want a camera on Danny Lau be right about now. Wherever he is, he must be pacing up and down, nervously waiting, twiddling his thumbs, biting his fingers. Yeah, I have to say I agree with your assessment. He spoke very, very well to Abby thereafter. Defeat, a defeat that may end up costing him a place at finals night on Saturday because there is no guarantee of him getting through that group B. We will chat about the groups at the end of the show. 135. 56. He had an opening there, Gervin. He couldn't take full advantage of it, so Biowetsky. 92. A big treble there. And in this kind of game, I feel like every treble is absolutely huge. It's been that kind of match. 135. Both players know the significance of it, and I think that's why we've seen some of the darts we've seen. Yeah, it's been a totally different kind of day for Nathan Gervin in particular today. It's been all about scrapping and battling. 99. And he puts himself in a decent spot here. A slightly more favourable finish than that of his opponent. 115 on offer. Chooses to go downstairs for starters. Now wants treble 20. Can't find it. And this is a big opportunity for the man oh, hoping to top the group. Nathan, well, it's as 80. big as it gets for Nathan Gervin. This is for a break at a 3-1 lead and it put him a leg away from qualification. 20 for tops. Tops it is. Forty. But that's a bounce out that's at the worst the possible time. 74. And so Seb returns for the 74. Well, he's talked about the problems with 60 and two darts. Well, we're going to see the same issue here. How much can he see? Hey, All of it. On the and he finds it. Sebastian and he rubs Biowetsky. salt into the wound. And so Group A goes down to effectively a best of three leg shootout. It's Nathan to throw first. Gervin has the darts in two of the remaining three, ma uh, three legs that could be played in this match. He needs two of them to top the group. If Biowetsky secures the win, Laube will be back on Saturday night. A maximum of three legs of tense 60. tungsten tossing here at the Super Series. A really gripping game. 140. And a thrilling finish to the action in Group 8. Don't worry, there's plenty more to come this week. We're back.
at 9.30 a.m. here on Sporty Stuff TV for the beginning of Group C. And it's double sessions Thursday and Friday, as always. Group B getting underway at 10 p.m. And it's the same time for finals night on Saturday. An audience in the arena as well, and you can be part of it. Tickets available for free via dartshop.tv. Gervin quietly has worked his way down to a finish after nine. 43. Now, can you and he bids to go one away from the win. He's going to have six at it so he can plot his route accordingly. 60. Sebastian may start on the 18s here. And now treble 20s, 138 would leave him on a finish just to tap Gervin on the shoulder again. Nathan, you require 81. This luxury is nice at the, in this spot, isn't it? Because he doesn't have to worry about the bullseye route. And as you mentioned, in this situation where everything must be racing through his mind. 49. He hasn't got the stress of an opponent breathing down his neck. He may do after this visit if Bioetsky can plunk in a couple of trebles. One. Gervin will return for the 32. 4 Maybe 3 2. 32. Doesn't want to give Bioetsky a go at the 104, 24. but he does. He does. Is so this another game one, changer? The 104. One dart at double 16. Oh my goodness, left. that is seismic from Seb. And he has the throw to knock Gervin out, to send Simply Danny through. To throw first. Game on. Well, the tension's almost unbearable for us. How must Nathan Gervin be feeling right now? How must Danny Lauby be feeling right now? And the coolest customer in Tungsten Town is Sebastian Biowetsky. 97. And have a look at this for a leg. 140. Back to back 140s. And Nathan Gervin is right up against it here. His back's against the wall. Bioretsky's put on a spurt. And his hopes of progressing through Group A could be ending in about six darts time. Six. Only 60. Well, the door isn't open, but maybe the cat flap is. 140. He quite managed to so take it off his hinges, and it's six darts from 161. For Biowetsky to spring another surprise win. That is after Stefan Belmont did the damage to Danny Lauby's campaign. Is Biowetsky going to dig Danny out of that 99. hole? He's got 62 upon his return. Gervin's going to go down for 19s. He needs all three of them. 95. That may not be that enough. Biowetsky returns for 62. To send Lauby through and knock Gervin out. Double 16. Now Match dark missed. 112 for Gervin. And he knows it's got to go. Ninety two left, and that's awkward. Went along the line to treble eighteen. And so Bioetsky will return for double sixteen. 52. Rest in your require 32. Double 16. No score. And that's more mismatched darts. Nathan and Gervin's got a reprieve. 60. He knows the significance of this moment. He steps back to recompose. As he stares down 60 to send us to a last leg. Now his opponent having missed match darts.
tops. Double ten. And has the chance come and gone for Nathan Gervin. Sebastian, you're required. And Bioretsky is back. Game to shot take the match, match and Sebastian to send Bioretsky. Danny Lalby through to Saturday night's finals here at the Super Series. Nathan Gervin will have to come back for Group B alongside Bioretsky. Congratulations to Danny Lalby, who has qualified for Saturday night's final. This is the tail of the tape then in our final game in Group A. A free dart average of 79.49 for Bioretsky. Four from 11 on the doubles. A checkout percentage of 36.36%. A high checkout of 104. What a time that was in the game to produce it as well. Nathan Gervin thought perhaps he was going to have the opportunity to send it to a last leg where he would have had the darts, but it wasn't to be for him. The table topper last night will have to return tomorrow and Friday evening to progress his way through to the finals on Saturday night. So congratulations go to Danny Lalby, who goes through to Saturday's finals. Let's head upstairs now then for a roundup of all we've seen today with Chris Murphy on the balcony alongside Abigail Davis. Very much, Henry. Wow, drama. Danny Lauby becomes the first player through to Saturday night's final. And I've just had it confirmed to me that he spent the majority of that last match stood outside. <laughs> yeah, I just passed through the practice room actually to get here and he wasn't in there watching. Everybody else was really gripped by uh, the end of that match, as I'm sure you were as well, and everybody watching at home. A real incredible end to the day. A group that looked like it was going to be wrapped up at the end of yesterday. Then it looked like it was going to be wrapped up halfway through today. And then in the end, just twists and turns right to the death. Yeah, let's get confirmation of that then by looking at the league table. There we have it. Danny Lauby on 22 points. Nathan Gervin and Sebastian Biowetsky both go into Group B, of course. Do you see Nathan Gervin after the phenomenal day he had yesterday? Of course, it has just not gone his way. I think you said in commentary, a woeful Wednesday, which it most certainly has been. Do you see him recovering tomorrow? Yeah, it's a, he needs to see it as a clean slate, doesn't he? And, it, and there is a good chance of getting through Group B. You've got a better chance of getting through it than of not getting through it. So he needs to see it that way. Um, but I think the way it's ended will be difficult to recover from because he would have thought, well, that's it. He lost three out of his last four matches in the end. But he, when Danny Lauby then lost out to that brilliant performance from Stefan Belmont. He, his Nathan must be thinking, right, I'm back in it and had to try and lift himself for the last game. Um, couldn't get over the line. And it's going to be difficult to recover. But um, And, by the way, it's a very, very tough group. It is indeed. We're going to take a look at that. But just one more word on that. I think it would have actually been better for Nathan had Danny wrapped it up himself so that Nathan hadn't been the one to throw that opportunity away. Absolutely. Agree 100%. It, it, it just must have been through so many different emotions today, coming into the day knowing it's completely in his own hands, feeling himself losing his grip, lost his grip completely, and then suddenly it's back in his hands, but didn't really have time to adjust to the situation and couldn't put in the performance he needed. Absolutely. You've touched upon it. That Group B is looking incredible, isn't it? There we have it. Confirmation, Danny Lauby is our Group A winner. Group B, Colin Osborne. And a great addition in himself, but then Scott Williams in there, Biowetsky and Nathan Gervin obviously joining Dennant as well. Who do you pick to come out of that group? Uh, Scott Williams, for me, is a man in form. Yeah. He's a player who's won four Challenge Tour titles and uh, a Pro Tour title as well. Uh, he's a fantastic watch, always was at the Live League, will be even more so at the Super Series because he's got these weird and wonderful ways. He's a proper showman, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him. Colin Osborne, one of the players, is at a nine data in this tournament as well. I think Gervin might just get through, and I'm going to back him to go through with the two men I've mentioned, Osborne and Williams. Wow, incredible. And then a little look at Group C as well. Aaron Monk entering the fray in mm. that one. How do you see that group going? Yeah, this week, of the three players that were in that bottom half, I think Stefan Belmont has made the most progress day by day. So I think he will be a contender in 
that group. But watch out for Lee Cox. He's a, a dangerous outsider, can play really well on his day, and I think he's going to be up there as well. And the best part of it is I'm not even going to be here for you to hold me to account. I was going to ask you about that. Is the reason that you're leaving because <laughs> you don't want to be outdone by Scott Williams in the fashion stakes? Well, I, I, I don't think uh, anybody can compete <laughs> no. with Scott Williams. Certainly not in sock. He wears Paul Nicholson's face on his socks. I mean, who can compete with that? I think that's the perfect place to leave it and leave you with that in your mind. Hopefully for the rest of the day, please do come and join us. 9.30, we'll be back in the morning with action from Group C before Group B gets underway tomorrow night at 10pm. Please come and join us. See you then.